to seven. As you can see, the Oakland Raiders have won the toss. They have employed themselves in the kickoff receiving position. Looking down the field is Ira Matthews, number 43, and Malcolm Barnwell. Malcolm Barnwell, by the way, is one of the speedsters on this Oakland Raider team that really is not a very fast team. They get things done in the proper way. But this young man, Malcolm Barnwell, can really fly. On the injured reserve last season was a seventh round draft pick from Virginia Union. And putting the ball up in the tee for the Minnesota Vikings, Rick Danmeyer. The Vikings 9-7 a year ago, winning the Central Division of the NFC. I might say once again because they are perennial champions. The Oakland Raiders 11-5 and they played their wild card right into the Super Bowl where they won it all. And a quick shift by the Minnesota Vikings. Will they try the onside kick? No, they kick to the corner. And it will be Ira Matthews. They kick away from the speed. Matthews piled up out over the 25-yard line. And we will see offensively the Oakland Raiders come out onto the field. Howard is a team, I think, that was disappointed in Denver last week. They couldn't put anything together. Well, they were not playing that game. They may have accepted all the plaudits in the Super Bowl, Bowl victory too readily, and also their real leader, Al Davis, has been busy with his lawsuit against the NFL, even as Pete Rozelle has been busy with the defense of that suit. Now, according to Davis, they're ready to go to work tonight. Look for them to throw deep against young cornerbacks. And Bob Chandler, the gifted receiver, not with the team. He was hurt in Denver as we watch on first and ten. Kenny King turn the left side, run into trouble there as the Vikings move out of their 3-4 defense, which is very new to them. We'll take a look at it. They have not been a good pass rushing team for a long time. The old cliche, they will bend, but they seldom break Howard holds true for these Vikings. Their greatest strength is in those linebackers whom you just saw. Their greatest weakness may be right there. They play a deep zone. It is the Davis theory, no matter what the other team's strength is, go with your strength. Throw deep, even against that zone. Kenny King got a couple, second down and eight. Kenny King, once again, right side, piled up, line of scrimmage, capacity crowd of 48,000 plus, loves it. Howard mentioned the linebackers of the Minnesota Vikings that actually dictated their move to a 3-4. Scott Studwell had beaten out Jeff Seaman a year ago, the longtime nine-year veteran middle linebacker. And by going to a 3-4, they can get Studwell 55 and Jeff Seaman both in the lineup. And they're good, hard hitters. They have good outside linebackers in Matt Blair, 59, and Fred McNeil, 54. It's third down and seven. The ball just short of the 30-yard line. Morris Bradshaw, 81, top of your screen. The speedster Cliff Branch to the left. And Pluckett with good protection. Bradshaw, intended receiver, far overthrown as Pluckett laid it up, probably just to get the attention of the secondary. If he was going to get an interception, that would have been almost as good as a punt. So out will come the punting team. And that will mean one of the best who's ever performed. And what a game he had against Denver gray guy averaging nearly 57 yards he had one of 69 yards and he is quite an athlete Eddie Payton and his mother Aileen down in Jackson Mississippi must be very proud of the Payton boys Walter is his brother Short hops it. I told you he's a good athlete. It doesn't get away from him. And he booms it way back to Peyton at the 15-yard line. Peyton, nice little move. Yeah. Finds an opening on the left side. He's out over the 35, close to the 39 on a 56-yard punt by Ray Guy. They love Eddie Peyton in this town. Most of you Monday night football fans will remember as you look at the Vikes offensive backfield, the extraordinary night he had in the Silver Dome when with Detroit against this very Minnesota team. Two of the best kick runs we have ever seen on Monday Night Football. There's the Vikes offensive line. Again, a note to take close cognizance of Sensor, the tight end, a great basketball player who shows those skills as a receiver. He wears number 81, and he is a gifted receiver. From the 33-yard line, Dills hands off. Over to the left side to Ted Brown, who's playing with a special pad on a very sore shoulder tonight. And quickly, the flags drop as Matt Millen, the right inside linebacker of the Oakland Raiders, was a little over aggressive. That will cost the Raiders. Ted Brown, fine receiver, a good runner, over 900 yards a year ago and 62 receptions. Damaged his shoulder against Tampa Bay. He was questionable right up to the start of the game. 
Our referee tonight, Gene Barth. That was just a stupid, undisciplined, unnecessary penalty. There's your front three, and missing a key man in the middle, being Reggie Kinlaw, being replaced by Johnny Robinson, the rookie from Louisiana Tech. It may make a major difference in Oakland's ability to stop the run. They gave up a lot of yardage to Denver a week ago. On first and ten, Ted Brown, left side once again, piled up quickly, sliding out there defensively. Several of the Raiders, headed, of course, by the rookie I just spoke of, Johnny Robinson, a fourth-round pick. As I said, he replaced Reggie Kinlaw, who might be, well, we don't know how badly his knee was damaged. He did undergo surgery, did Reggie Kinlaw. And Dave Pair, remember a year ago, was there. He is no longer with the ball club. So the Raiders, in their 3-4, which they don't stay in all the time anyway, a little weak in the middle. Second down and eight. Ted Brown reverses the field. That's an all-pro cornerback, not only in interceptions, but in open field tackling Lester Hayes. Right at the line of scrimmage, and he took on Ted Brown one-on-one. -on -one. Well, there's the implacable one. The only man he'll bend to is our colleague Francis Talkie. In fact, Francis, somebody asked him if he talked to Francis two minutes before game time. He said, <laughs> not even for Francis. Mike Davis <laughs> is down for the Oakland Raiders. Mike Davis, who turned into an absolutely superb, strong safety a year ago, being treated now. Looks as though they are investigating some sort of injury to the ankle. Most underrated coach, quite possibly, because he works in the shadow of Al Davis as that man, Tom Flores. A brilliant story in his own right, fighting back from consumption, tuberculosis. He used to quarterback these Raiders, a receiver coach since 1972, and filled the big shoes of John Madden when he took over three years ago. But the concern right now is for Mike Davis, a major part of that Oakland Raider legend of a year ago. Doesn't look good, does it? No, it doesn't. There he is, of course, the key play perhaps of the Oakland Raiders season, their drive for the Super Bowl, the interception late in the game against Cleveland that provided an open 14 to 12 win. We'll get a further report as quickly as we can on the condition of Mike Davis. Kip, it's interesting that the Vikings have tried to run the ball each down so far. They have not been known as a running team. They are predominantly a pass team. Last week they ran the, they passed the ball 63 times against Tampa Bay but only got one touchdown. They feel they can run a little bit of Oakland tonight. So far they haven't. We have the three wide, well. wide receivers in there now. Sammy White, Terry Lacount, Ahmad Rashad. Single setback, so we still have Joe Simpson at the tight end on third down and seven. A lot of time for Dills, and yet he could not find the receiver, and he finally was hammered there, and guess who? Ted Hendricks. And that will bring up fourth down. Interesting that Fran mentioned the 63 passes Dills threw last week. The last one was perfectly thrown to a Tampa Bay defender for the touchdown that gave them the game. Yeah, but you know, Howard, it was the only interception he had the entire night. Inopportune but he time. was in field goal position. A very bad call. He didn't make that call. <laughs> they send that in. I don't think it was a bad call, though. They, uh, their kicker doesn't have a lot of range. You had a quick glimpse of Ira Matthews, a dangerous return man for the Raiders. And, of course, Greg Coleman is the putter for the Minnesota Vikings. Coleman looking for the left corner. Matthews would like to field it. Coleman gets a good bounce. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Fine punt by Greg Coleman. So the Oakland Raiders will begin at their own 15-yard line as Jim Plunkett talks things over on the sidelines. Their touchdown passes came last year when Jim Plunkett took over from an injured Dan Pastorini after the fourth game against Kansas City. And from then on, it was the Cinderella story that you have read and heard so much about. Plunkett looks over the 3-4 defense of the Vikings, first and 10 at his own 15-yard line. And Plunkett misses the handoff to Van Egan, and down he goes. And there will be a loss of a yard, a yard and a half. Defensively, Doug Martin was there, and Mike Davis is now being assisted from the field, and again, we'll get a report as quickly as we can. Now, that is a very serious matter for the future of the Raiders. 
was there to defend their championship. Second down and 11. Again, wide receivers, Morris Bradshaw, 81, in there because Bob Chandler damaged his spleen against Denver, underwent surgery, and still says he'll be back for the season. Cliff Branch, the other wide receiver, with a lot of speed. Flag is down, pluck it. Fights away from Minnesota Viking pursuers, dumps it off incomplete in the general direction of Kenny King, but again, a flag is down. Holding, and the Raiders will be detected holding, and they may not take this because it'll just be half the distance to the goal. And the down would remain the same as we look at Gene Barth and company. Not a bad business to be a president of an oil company. Money doesn't buy his own franchise. Holding, 63 offense, refused, third down. Upshaw holding on the left side. Even though refused, it represents two major penalties against Oakland with less than four minutes played. Not a happy augury. As you look at Tom Flores, who notes it very well. Third down, a little more than 10 for the Oakland Raiders. Flip, Bratch, slip to the left. Bradshaw up there at the top of your screen. Has the speed, but not the moves of Chandler. No flags are down. You detected movement, I'm sure, however. Still, there are no flags, so it'll be fourth down. And if you're going to have somebody punting from the goal line, it may as well be Ray Guy, and he moves on to the field, pluck it off. Interesting thing, the Vikings went with just a three-man rush, eight men dropped back, and they still got pressure, Howard, with just a three-man rush against five blockers. Not only that, a mix-up between the intended receiver, Cliff Branch, and Plunkett. Branch stopping dead on the spot, in effect, button-hooking, and Plunkett throwing downfield. He had expected Branch to keep running in a different route. There is Eddie Payton. He is 55 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's the respect he has for this man, Ray Guy. Guy bangs one that will go out of bounds at the 40-yard line, and a flag is down again at the line of scrimmage. And you're going to have a holding call on Oakland again. This one I would assume they will take because then Guy will be kicking from the end zone and Eddie Payton will have an opportunity for the run back. Tom Flores. Interesting. It was, what, the fourth Super Bowl? He was a backup quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs when they stunned everyone with their win in New Orleans. And he has a Super Bowl ring from Kansas City. Also played at Buffalo. Three major penalties still within the first four minutes. Holding 84 offense, still fourth down. Derek Ramsey holding, and now Eddie Payton still respecting Ray Guy, who will kick from his end zone. There he is on his own 40 yard line. So Ray Guy deep in his own end zone, and the Vikings have been noted over the years for blocking punts, but Ray Guy does not have punts blocked very often. And they're coming after him. Another booming, towering kick that, again, will go out of bounds. And I'll tell you, that is awfully good accuracy. If that should slice just a little bit, he would lose a lot of yardage. And he gets a lot out of the punt from the end zone. Does Ray Guy. But that's nothing new with this man. He's been the best around for many, many years. We'll be back. Number 23, that's Otis McKinney, who has stepped into the shoes of Mike Davis, whom we told you a moment ago has a damaged ankle that's being x-rayed at the moment and meanwhile ray guy and friend twice in a row he kicked from deep in his own territory angling for the sidelines and it was deliberate it was i've never seen that 44 yards on that kick against the wind and then out of bounds with no return fabulous and the one he lost on the penalty 45 yards out of bounds no return first down and 10 the ball at the 47 yard line of the vikings sensor in motion with the handoff ted brown left side brown stepping out of bounds smartly up around Midfield, and another flag goes down, and that's against Oakland Gift. Again, Millen, I believe. Well, you can't do this and expect to win. There was a gain of about five yards. We'll watch again. Second-year man out of Penn State. Where's 55? Look for yourself. You won't see it here, but Ricky Young, number 34, just leveled a linebacker. Got Ted Brown down the field, and you'll see the Millen here hitting him five yards out of bounds. A 
totally absurd. Four major penalties. They have played four minutes and Personal ten foul, seconds. Unnecessary roughness. 55 defense. First down. And following the penalty, the Minnesota Vikings will be at the 33-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. We're in the first quarter from Bloomington. Ten minutes and 50 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Both teams lost their opening games. And we have no score thus far. Simpson split wide to the right. The big tight end with all the agility. And Dills will put it in the air on first down. Simpson is the intended receiver. Otis McKinney was around it. And also Matt Millen. Incomplete. Unusual for Ahmad Rashad. He usually draws double coverage. Open plays mainly man-to-man -man defense. They're going to try to cover him with Lester Hayes and Dwayne Osteen man-to-man. -man. Here it goes again. Dills back in the pocket. He's got his man. Pretty good throw, but good defensive play by McKinney. And McKinney that. really starred, Frank. He was once a second-round Giant draft choice. This he was. materialized for the Giants. He really starred during the playoffs last year. Second down and ten. That's Sammy White, another speedy receiver in motion. Ted Brown, draw play. Met there and quickly by number 53, Rod Martin. He of the three interceptions in the Super Bowl. And let's talk about that, friend. You know it's not too bright to cover Ahmad Rashad singly. Well, it really isn't. As you look at a picture of Rod Martin there, it's a great matchup, a classic matchup. It's Lester Hayes, maybe the finest quarterback, the cornerback in the game against Ahmad Rashad, who may be the finest split uh, outside receiver in the game. And they're going nose to nose, man to man. It's just like a championship fight out there. They haven't, they haven't tested Hayes yet with Rashad, but they will. Third down, 14. Four-yard loss. Ball at the 37-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Dills in the shotgun. Dills overthrows Sammy White. Sammy White covered nicely by Burgess Owens, and another flag is down. Owens was all over him on that play. No question about it. Holding in this time against Minnesota. Well, here's a decision for you. As I mentioned, Rick Danmar does not have a big leg. I don't think he can make it from there if they had to go to fourth down and kick the field goal. That would be about a 52-yard field goal, which is really beyond his range. Seven or eight offense, refuse, fourth down. You're exactly right. Uh, that was the decision. See who they bring out. Well, I suppose Bud Grant agrees with you, Fran, as they bring out Greg Coleman, the punter. And he's a good uh, corner kicker. He's got good accuracy uh, kicking the ball out inside the 15, 10-yard line. Ira Matthews at the 10-yard line, but he'll try and guess with Coleman as to which corner Coleman will try and angle the ball to. Coleman, right? <laughs> Hooded kicker, angles to the right, catches the end zone. That'll bring it out to the 20. And there is a net gain of... 18 yards. Bud Grant cannot be too happy thus far in this young season. We'll be back. We're in Bloomington, Minnesota. The Oakland Raiders following the touchback will have a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. We have no score. Vikings in a strange defensive alignment, at least for me, they had a 3-4. That's new for them. Kenny King, right side. Piled up there, Doug Martin, Mark Mullaney, both out there defensively for Minnesota. It shows a change in the game, Giff. You remember the old purple gang of Page and Eller and Marshall and Larson that dominated teams? Defensive lines don't dominate teams anymore in this league. The linebackers and defensive backs do. The Vikings have gone to the three-man line with four active linebackers because they couldn't defend the run. Now tonight, so far, they've defended the run very nicely. More to it than that. You use what your strengths are. In the case of Minnesota, the careful drafts of the 70s produced their greatest strength in linebacker. Loss of two. It'll be second down and 12. Ball at the 18-yard line of the Raiders. Kenny King, left side, big opening. He has a blocker in front. Down the sidelines, and he gets the first down with a nifty run out close to the 38-yard line. Kenny That's King, who... <laughs> came for a rather relatively cheap two seventh round draft picks of Jack Tatum a year ago has made a difference for this ball club. Well, here's an end zone replay. As I was just saying, the three-man line is tough against the run, but here they go <laughs> left behind. Left Shaw in a shell, which they have done for about a thousand years, and they get a big hole, and there's Branch trying to get down in front of Willie Teal, the rookie cornerback. There's a picture of King. What an addition 
to this team he made a year ago. They go to the right side, lose two. They come to the left and pick up yardage for the first down. On first down, plunk it back. A lot of time, no receiver. Now he finds Chester. Chester upended there. Nice tackle. Coming up quickly, number 25, Kurt Knopf. Now remember, Minnesota plays a deep zone. They're laying back against Plunkett's greatest threat, the deep pass. But again, it is the Davis theory. You go with your strengths. He's got speed receivers, particularly Branch. And in the long run, he feels that Plunkett will be able to crack that center. Well, he's going against a rookie cornerback on one side and a cornerback on the other side that was cut by the Detroit Lions two weeks ago. So he, he's, he's, he's got some vulnerability back there. Second down and seven from the 40-yard line. Plunkett. Chester is there, but does not hold on, and is picked off. Willie Teal, the interception, and he is relatively, well, you could call him a rookie, too, Fran. He comes up with a key interception on a pass that should have been caught by Chester. It's a lot of luck in this game, Francis. That was one of them. Although it was a bad place to throw, he threw the ball to Chester. Chester had a chance to catch it, but he was going to be hit immediately. The ball is looping downfield, which he had to do. A very difficult catch. You're good, kidding. Good concentration, however, because there was a lot of traffic and a lot of smoke blowing around there. <laughs> Telling you it was. Teal, second round draft pick a year ago, injured reserve all year with the knee. Big play for Minnesota, first and ten. Ball inside, their own 45 yard line. Dead Brown almost breaks one off, but quickly Otis McKinney was there for the stop. We've been traveling around the country a little bit. We opened last week in Cleveland. Where were we? I think in Miami on Thursday, Bloomington. And we are going to see the Buffalo Bills for the first time for our ABC crew at 8.30 at a special time on the special Thursday night edition coming your way against the Philadelphia Eagles. What a pair of coaches. Chuck Knox, Dick Vermeil. Not bad quarterbacks. Ferguson, Jaworski. There was a gain of four, second down and six. Bills. Open Sammy White, first down inside the 30-yard line of the Open Raiders. Some people forgot about Sammy White, except the Vikings. Uh, he may not be quite as good as Rashad. I thought he was uh, right up there with Rashad when I played with him. Here's an end zone replay. He's going against Osteen, again, it's man-on-man -man coverage. That's also the Vikings trick. The two outside receivers, Sammy White beats his man easily. Bills gets the ball in there. Threw the ball nice and sharply also, Fred. Yes, he did. With the Hayes and Burgess Owens, Frank. So the Vikings, they have been in Minnesota territory throughout the first quarter with six minutes remaining. Dills, he's in open and tries to hurry the pass, and Sensor could not get back for the completion. Correction, it was Dwayne Osteen and Burgess Owens. Yes. There's don't kind of go a, near Hayes. Kind of a youthful movement on this man's part there, Fran. He had time to set up and get that ball there. Well, he, you know, he's only played, this is, I think, his third regular season game in his three years he's been here. He had the man open way down the field. He didn't take his time to, to get the ball in there. Got to be kind of anxious playing your third game against the world champions. Again, Steve Dills playing for an injured Tommy Kramer. Started last week against Tampa Bay. And the other game he played was against Washington, a winning effort a year ago. Second and ten. Oh, what a hit. Otis McKinney on a safety blitz. Ball jarred loose from Dills. I don't think he even saw McKinney. And Oakland comes up with the football. Dave Browning. Well, that was a tough hit, my friends. Uh, I want to see the replay here. They're not allowed to hit the quarterback in the head under any circumstance. Let's see where he puts his forearm. I don't know whether he got it low enough or hit him in the head. It's in the head. That well, is a penalty. He went up the chest and caught him in the head. <laughs> No matter how he gets there, that is a penalty to try to, try to protect the uh, the quarterback. He could have put him out very seriously. It was a good play except for the hit. <laughs> Otis McKinney, who has replaced an injured Mike Davis, forces the turnover, and Oakland will have the ball first and 10 at the 34-yard line. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell, Fran Tarkenton. Fran watching his old teammates, the Minnesota Vikings, who have just coughed up the football, blitzed by McKinney, jars a loop from Steve Dills. The Raiders have a first and 10 their own 34-yard line. Bradshaw split right. Bucket. Connects with Kenny King, and Kenny King turns upfield looking for first down markers. Gets to the 42, a couple of yards short. Scott Studwell made the stop. 
That's Tommy Kramer who's got strained ligaments in the knee. Talked to him today. He's hopeful he'll be back in two or three weeks, but he can't even be sure of that. Cracker Jack, young quarterback, cut kind of in the Tarkenton mold. He has played very well here the past two years. At the end of last year, he played about as good as anybody in the league. Second down. We'll call it three as the ball marked just over the 41-yard line. Kenny King, right side, good defensive effort. Left side, headed there by James White and Mullaney. Maybe a pickup of a half a yard. It'll be third down and two. If the Raiders are giving the Vikings every chance in the world to take the lead in this game, and the Vikings have not taken advantage of those opportunities. Well, we saw a key Viking weakness in that regard. They do not have a long-range field goal kick. Another key element, the depth of the Raiders. Mike Davis gets hurt. McKinney comes in and becomes a compelling factor. Single setback, Van Egan. Bucket, third and two. Throws a short one over the middle of Van Egan. There is a flag down that usually holding. Comes down before the holding call. Van Egan picking up the first down yardage inside the 45 of Minnesota. As we wait for the call, it's interesting that Oakland likes to throw the ball. Let's listen to the call. Mm, it's it's Minnesota. <laughs> My goodness. Well, now wait a minute. I I thought I thought I thought those guys were up here in the uh, booth with me, but evidently they're out there. Howard, Frank, come back. I'll call Dr. Tom Reese immediately. That was talking to the major in the <laughs> <laughs> The point I was making, Howard, is that Oakland does like to move the ball down. Here's the call. Defense, a push to the face, penalty refused, first down. Doug Martin, penalty refused, first down on the completion to the 45-yard line, Mark Van Egan. But being the great team that opens, they adapt. They're going against a, a deep drop zone. They're dropping the ball off to the backs, which is exactly what they should be doing to bring that zone up tight. Exactly right. Derek Jensen replaces Van Egan. King with a little screen in front. Raymond Chester sliding out to provide the block. And King. Well, the big yardage, inside the 42-yard line. Excuse me, Giff. While well, the big yardage didn't materialize on that play, Fran, a clever call. A very clever call. You know, they, are, uh, they got a positive play out of it. Oakland didn't win the Super Bowl and hadn't been the team of Exxon for all these years because they were dumb. Dumb they <laughs> are not. The only wild card team ever to win the Super Bowl. Bradshaw goes to the right. Out to the left is Cliff Branch. There was a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. King on the draw play. Big opening. Watch out. Has a blocker in front. And King just falling down close to the 20-yard line, taking Tama, Tommy Hannon with him. And Willie Teal. And interestingly, he ran right behind Henry Lawrence and Mickey Marvin. He did. He read his block as well. He got good blocking there. Good block by Derek, Derek Jensen. Jensen. had a good block. And look at the receiver trying to block down there. He did all right. It's hard to block downfield. He kept his feet trying to keep in front of the defensive back. He didn't get him out of the way. But Kenny King again uh, gets big yards. Good night for football. Temperature 65 degrees. Nevertheless, Kenny King gets a breather. First and 10, Oakland. 21-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. Bucket quickly to Branch. And Branch with the quick feet down to the 10-yard line. That is uh, a tough situation. You got Cliff Branch, a perennial all-pro receiver against a rookie cornerback, Willie Teal. He was here a year ago. If you watch Cliff Branch, look at his numbers. But he's on injured reserve. Watch how far off Willie Teal is. He's a good seven, eight yards off. And Branch gets the play. That's the kind of play that I'm sure Cliff Branch came back to the bench and said, look, this guy's playing 11, 12 yards off me. Let me do a little quick hitch on him. Again, it's not what Oakland wants to do, but they're taking what the Vikings give them. And they're doing this against a very strong win. Second quarter, they'll have the win at their back. First down, goal to go. Safety blitz. Hart Whittington, right side. Down close to the six-yard line. Mark Mullaney sliding out there defensively to make the stop. That's the great man, number 83, Ted Hendricks. I'll tell you, Teddy, you're going to have competition. 
what Onsbogger is doing with A.J. Dewey is trying to make another Ted Hendricks out of him, and he's well on his way to doing it. Man started 176 consecutive games going back to 1969 with Baltimore. And France said he'd never make it. <laughs> Not true. Second down, goal to go. The ball at the six-yard line. Van Egan back in, number 30, with Whittington, 22. Whittington. Inside the five, just barely. Good defensive effort there by the middle of the defensive line and safety man Tommy Hannon helping out Scott Studwell. The play didn't pan out for a score, but at that position on the seven-yard line, someone may question why a draw play. It's a great place for a draw play. You're trying to get a quick rush in the defensive line. If you pop the scene, you've got six points. They got a positive play. They'll have to throw this time. Friend, you were there when they drafted Scott Studwell on the 11th round, and boy, did he turn out well. Well, he beat out Seam at the middle linebacker spot. Now they go to the 3-4. Both of them play. Third and goal. Bradshaw and Branch split to the left. Chester up on the right. Top of your screen. Long count. Hoping to draw them off. Flag goes down. It's up in the end zone. Incomplete. Tommy Hannon over there helping out Willie Teal against Cliff Branch. Right. I think that Plunkett drew them off. I think you're right, Howard. I think I, I think Duck White uh, jumped offside. Offside, Minnesota. You're not supposed to do it, but every now and then give them a long count, give them a little extra hut instead of your ordinary hut, and off they come. It's tough to give a team the quality of Oakland a second chance down there inside the five. 72 defense, offside, half the distance, still third down. Jim White, they call him Duck White. Offside, third down, goal to go, the penalty half the distance to the goal. All right, Oakland's come in with their goal line type offense. The Vikings are adjusting their goal line type defense. Three tight ends for the Raiders. They're in a situation where they can run, but it's a long way to run down there. I think pass again, Giff. And if we pass, we'll probably see play action. That's right. That much time remaining in the first quarter. There is no score. The toss is to Kenny King. Sprinting to the sidelines. He will not get there. Fine defensive effort. Willie Teal, who was victimized a short while ago by Cliff French. Beautiful tack. It was. It's hard to run from three yards out down there. It's difficult. Here's an injury. He's going to pitch out. You've got 11 men up on the line of scrimmage. Not much place to go. And Teal really played off the blocker. What a play by Willie Teal. That's the point, Dan. Yep. He, he played, played off, off the that block. Great play. There he is. We told you, a second-round draft pick a year ago. Missed the season because of an injury. Bobby Bryant has retired after 13 years. And Willie Teal has that starting job to earn. Chris Barr with Ray Guy holding. 21-yard attempt. First score of the night. With less than two minutes remaining in the first quarter, Minnesota having blown several opportunities, finally the sack on their quarterback Steve Dills, and Oakland took it in. We'll be back. The chat is Eddie, Eddie, meaning Eddie Payton. Howard told you a moment ago in 77, he went 98 yards against this team in Detroit for the kickoff return. He went 87 yards on a punt return, both touchdowns, so Bud Grant said, I better get him. He's available, and here he comes. That is Eddie, saved by Chris Barr, the man who kicked it off. And Eddie gets it out over the 35 to the 31-yard line. At each end of the field, he's got his coterie of bleacher bugs who just adore him, and thus that chant, Eddie. Here he comes. It's a low kick, and watch Eddie Payton do a good kick. Return. He gets up the field in a hurry. He's got good blocking. The Vikings work long and hard on their kickoff return, as everybody does. And he's an inspired little player. I understand he's got a brother that plays in the National Football League. Yes, he's got a brother. Sweetness, they call him. Oh, yeah. First and ten, the Vikings. They have marked it at the 37-yard line. The Vikings down by three. This is Ted Brown again. Out over the 40-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Hit there by Johnny Robinson, the rookie middle nose guard for the, for the Oakland Raiders. Real problem for the Vikes. Well, they have a number of problems, but the absence of a running game is killing them. You know that, friend? The Vikes have not had a running game here for the past five years. I don't understand why, but we haven't had one here when I was here either. You know what they were last year, next to last in the National Football League. Only one team was worse in rushing than the Vikings, yet they won that Central Division. Second and seven. Bills. They won't waste time running too often. This one's hung up for grabs. 
And there's going to be an interference call downfield. It could be either Osteen or Rashad because they were both fighting to get back to the ball. Well, this will be a bonus for the Vikings if they get a hit of fair really well. And I think they're going to get it. Defensive pass interference, number 35, first down. Dwayne Osteen against Rashad. He had great coverage, but watch Ahmad's a field player. He knows where he is on the field. Watch Ahmad get back into the underthrown ball. I'm not sure who pushed who, really. I love old Ahmad, but he might have pushed as much as Osteen. Well, Again, stupid penalty. Five major penalties against Oakland here in the first quarter. I think that call working against Osteen was that Osteen was playing Rashad while Rashad was playing the ball. First and ten inside the 40 of the Oakland Raiders. Bills again feeling the pressure of Ted Hendricks. And he goes down in the arms of Dave Browning. Hendricks didn't make that tackle, but Frank called it exactly right. Hendricks was the one who put the pressure on and caused the tackle. Here's the end zone replay. You'll watch Hendricks come in here. The other trouble with Hendricks, not that he gets so many sacks, but he's so big. He gets penetration. Mm -hmm. He gets up in your face. He makes you move up, and somebody else gets the sack. Hendricks caused the sack there that Matuzic uh, and Browning uh, get credit for. You've got to set your play trying to look at where Hendricks is coming from because he comes from anywhere and everywhere. Second down, a little more than 15 to go. He's got Rashad against Osteen again. He's had the screen call to Ricky Young. There's a blocker in front, and Ricky Young taps on some yardage. Heading down inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Ted Hendricks again with Randy McClanahan had on the stop. Well, they got Young in the trade for White. They got him when Francis was still there. Francis quickly discovered that he was superb coming out of the backfield on the pass. Final seconds of the first quarter ticking off. Minnesota Vikings short on their first down attempt. They will have a third down and three. The ball will be without the stick. The NFL's top defensive back, and that is one. And our graphic without the five playoff interceptions. He had a total of 18 a year ago. Third down and three. Minnesota, in all probability, will pass. They do not. They give the ball to Ted Brown, and they're short of the first down. Well, I'll tell you why they did that, Gip. In that situation, Bud Grant will look at the thing as a, as a two down situation. He would have got, if he'd have gotten close, he'd have run again on fourth down. I think he'll still go on fourth down and try to pick up the first down. Because of the basic weakness, no field goal kick. The it greatest was, Minnesota strength thus far was in containing Oakland to a field goal. A field Oakland, Oakland couldn't get in for the TD. That may penalize Oakland later in the game. A field goal attempt would be some 48 yards. Apparently, Grant not having the confidence and Rick Danmeyer to kick it that far. So on fourth down, the Minnesota Vikings will go with it. And he will throw. Sensor in motion. Hendricks again. For the end zone, Sammy White overthrown. And the Oakland Raiders defensive team will give their offensive teammates good field position. He didn't have a lot of room, but I thought Sammy White had a step or two on Lester Hayes. He did, but Dills was feeling the breath of Hendricks again. <laughs> the Oakland Raiders leading three to nothing. They got a field goal out of Chris Barr from Un 21 yards up. Uncharacteristic, though, of Minnesota to go deep on fourth and three when you've got to have a first down. As well as they throw the ball to the backs, you would certainly think they would have tried to gotten one, get gotten one to the backs then. They did. Jim Blackett. Cinderella boy from a year ago looks it over. Puts both backs in the pattern. Van Egan picks up. Cliff Branch is open. And I do not believe that he had possession of the ball. No. No, he did not. And finally, with a late indication, incomplete. Well, they went back to their to their deep passing game, Howard. And what happens there, you've got linebackers back so deep that they squeeze the receiver. Very difficult catch. There's watch. one of the best, number 59, Matt Well, Blair. watch here, and you'll watch the linebackers getting 15, 20 yards deep. They try to squeeze the ball in. He, he throws it well, but he cannot hold on because McNeil, 54, is crunching him. Here's the reverse angle. You'll see it again from another spot. 
This is our camera across again, the field. again, he's got the ball. Should have caught it. Could have made the catch, but it's a lot of traffic in there, and that ain't easy. Fred McNeil all over. Second down. Kenny King left side. Kenny King turns the corner, eluding the pursuit of James White, and gets out to the 39-yard line, where it'll be third down and two. NCAA football coming your way this Saturday, live at 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central, 10.30 Pacific. Number one ranked Notre Dame takes on number the 11th ranked Michigan. Michigan, of course, upset this past week in that game at Ann Arbor, Michigan, where you can't hear yourself think. College football on Saturday over most of these ABC stations. By the way, these rankings from the Associated Press. Johnny Faust getting his season off in a winning way. He's the high up guy, Giff. But took his entire high school with him. Kenny King, left side, down he goes. Fred McNeil is there defensively, and a flag is down. Some play by 54, Fred McNeil. Played very well here during his career. Second round, a uh, first round draft choice out of UCLA. Oakland Raiders backing off. Holding, 78 offense, penalty refused. Fourth down. Shell on the left side, holding. Interesting note, this offensive line of the Raiders, if you include Raymond Chester, has 63 years of experience. About 50 of it between Shell and Upshaw. <laughs> Shell in his 13th year, Upshaw in his 15th. Upshaw, by the way, started his 204th consecutive game tonight, going back to all the way to 67. Ray Guy's got the wind in his back. If he may kick it out of the stadium here. They're going to try to block it. Guy had to hurry and it came off the foot. I don't know whether anyone got a hand on it or not. He still gets a little roll inside the 35. You might remember some years ago, the Vikings played the Raiders in the Super Bowl, and Ray Guy never had a punt blocked in his career, and Fred McNeil blocked that punt on him. Here again, they almost blocked it, caused a bad, bad kick. Teal was also in there. Here they come. Well, he kicked it under him. It was a pretty good kick by a guy who wanted to kick it under him. It was not blocked, but it was certainly different. He it, got a break on the roll, too. 30 yards on a punt that Ray Guy <laughs> slipped under the arms of Teal. Minnesota, first and 10, their own 35. Line, the word is a Mike Davis, fractured fibula of the right leg. Consider the different things that could have happened, that could not be all too bad. Dills, wide open is White, and hook slides and drops the football. The offensive coach of the Vikings is, is Jerry Burns. We'll get back that to me. Let's watch Ray Guy. You don't see the versatility of Ray Guy and how good he really is. They were going to block the kick. Rather than give up the block, he saw the man. He kicked it low and got it under his arms. I think he's that good. Somebody else may think he's not. That's very good. Yes, that's amazing what he did. Well, he is amazing. Tell you, Oakland looks like they're sitting on their Super Bowl laurels. As a team, they look terribly sluggish. They failed to get it in when they had the shot. Terry LeCount is in number 80. It'll be second down and 10. Again, the ball of Minnesota's 35-yard line. They trail three to nothing. Dills tries to squeeze the ball in front of Lester Hayes to Sammy White. It'll be third down at 10. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations identify themselves. KNTV 11, San Jose. I think I agree with you, Fran. I think Ray Guy saw Teal coming in, didn't want to get a block, kicked it underneath. Again, if you just joined us, Minnesota had many opportunities in the first quarter. They could not capitalize. The Oakland Raiders forced a turnover with a blitz of Otis McKinney against Steve Dills, and then took it in, covering half the distance of the field. Shotgun settling for three, and they lead three to nothing. Third and ten. Dills, Stalk. getting away this time from Hendricks and going to Sensor. Sensor will get the first down on a good effort by the big tight end. And a good effort by the young quarterback to get away from the stork. That's exactly right, in my opinion. The stork was there again all over the kid. He kept his poise. He found the athletic type receiver, Sensa, who so much resembles Dave Logan in what? terms of basketball background. 
There's, there's Dale. He gets it off to Sensor, and he was glad to see Joe Sensor there. As I was going to make the point a minute ago, Jerry Burns tried, the offensive coordinator of the Vikings, who calls the plays, tried to use the run tonight. We're not going to see much more running out of the Vikings. They're going to line up and throw the football. First and 10, 47-yard line of the Vikings. Bills back, man open. Sammy White used that hang on once again. Defensively, Burgess Owens. I'd like to qualify what I said about Mike Davis. I'm really not going to qualify it. I said considering what it could have been in the injury, we've been told it's a fractured fibula. And Fran and I both speak from authority. <laughs> yes, we, we both have had fractured fibulas. Depending upon where the break was, it could mean two, three, four weeks, up to five or six weeks. All right, here's the reverse angle. He, the kid, Dills, throws a strike to Sammy White. Sammy White doesn't drop many balls. But he did that time, but then he gets a very good shot. Burgess Owens. Second down and 10. Ahmad Rashad's foot left. Flag goes as Ted Brown drives the middle. And it will be a procedure call. Ball side, 73 offense. Ron Yeri, the longtime veteran at right tackle for the Vikings with a false start. And they get no choice there. He blew the whistle before the play started. Uh, they'll have to take the five-yard mark off. Interesting that last time, Howard, the young man, Dills, had protection. He threw a strike. No ground game at all. No ground game at all, but any quarterback has got to have protection in order to throw the football. Actually, both defensive lines have put good pressure on Plunkett and Dills, and neither one have thrown well tonight. To give them protection, both of them will throw well. Ricky Young in there. Number 34, along with Dills. Ricky Young, fine receiver, and Dills puts him out of the backfield. And Dills, again, forced to hurry his pass. He, again, had tremendous pressure. Rod Martin was coming. And Dills had to unload it before he wanted to. It'll be third down and 15. Interestingly, Giff in there on the coverage, Monty Jackson, once considered perhaps as good a cornerback as there was in the league. Not only was he considered that, Howard, he was, and but he hasn't been that for the Raiders. Raiders gave up a first, a second, and a third That's to get right. Jackson in 78 after he had two all-pro years with the Rams. He's not played that way since he came to the Raiders. Widely criticized deal, if you'll remember. Third and 15. Ten Raiders on the line of scrimmage. Dills drops the ball. Here comes Hendricks. Sensor. <laughs> and Sensor back to the line of scrimmage. Rod Martin and Monty Jackson defensively there for Oakland. It'll be fourth down. A few weeks ago, Giff, you asked me the question, do I like the shotgun? I said no. That is one reason why I do not like the shotgun. The snap never comes the same place all the time. You get fumbles. You get ball snapped over your head. You get ball snapped on the ground. I don't like it. I'm in the minority, but I still don't like it. But you notice how every time the viewers are saying 83, Ted Hendricks <laughs> Coleman will punt. You had a glimpse of Ira Matthews at the 15-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Beautiful punt by Coleman. High. A lot of hang time, and the Vikings are downfield. Here come Matthews with a good return after the 30-yard line on a 46-yard punt. It's Ira Matthews, who could have been nailed as far back as the 15-yard line, works it out to the 30, and the Oakland Raiders will be in good field position, leading by three. Remaining in the first half from Bloomington, Minnesota. The Oakland Raiders out over the Minnesota Vikings. Three to nothing. The Raiders first and ten. The ball inside their own 30. Once again, we'd like to reassure the parents of Mike Davis. Not a serious injury, even though it sounds maybe worse than it is, a broken fibula. But he should be all right with no major problems. Up to the 35-yard line goes Mark Van Egan. And Howard, you just mentioned in the commercial, you wondered why he had not been carrying the football tonight. Couldn't understand it. Those quick poppers up the middle. He's not the greatest running fullback in the world, but he still has a functionality, and it's in that kind of play as well as coming out in the backfield where he's a good receiver. Van Egan is a football player. We have to see if Oakland will go back to their short passing game. The only thing they've had success with tonight is a short passing game. Second down and five following the five-yard pickup by Van Egan. Rocket throws the ball before Branch made his cut covered there and not badly by Willie Teal. There again, the defensive pass rush of the Vikings forced Plunkett to throw the ball much sooner than he wanted to. If he'd have had the protection, he'd have had Branch for a long gainer. He didn't. But he did go to the long ball. 
He did go with the long ball and then not a completion. Third down and five, and as we see all over the league now, the specialty units coming onto the field, Minnesota anticipating pass. They bring in their fifth or sixth back. As we look down, it is six backs that are now in there defensively. Six backs and one linebacker, one Matt Blair. That's not a bad one to have in there. He's like a defensive back. Third and five. The Raiders from the 35-yard line, leading by three. Bucket. Again, anticipating the move, only this time is Bradshaw incomplete. And he had Bradshaw wide open. And pressure from Mark Mullaney for Minnesota. Again, the pressure caused the Aaron throw. Any, uh, most people can throw when they have good protection. I remember plucking the Super Bowl last year. He got protection. He completed passes. Jaworski didn't get protection, and he didn't complete passes. That's simple. Eddie Payton drops back to his 10 in the offensive machine. Ray Guy, along with Dave Jennings of the Giants, they have to be almost in a class of their own in terms of punting. And they're both fine athletes. Guy. This time it does not turn over and does not necessarily take a Raider bounce and is killed at the 31-yard line. Hustling down there was Derek Jensen. 34-yard punt. He had plenty of time, an unusually poor punt for Ray Guy. Capacity crowd as we begin the final home season for the Minnesota Vikings in Metropolitan Stadium, where we'll return in a moment. Not one of your cosmetic beauties is the matchup thus far tonight between the Minnesota Vikings and the Oakland Raiders, but there is some heavy and hard hitting as both teams trying to win their first game of the season. They both drop their openers, Minnesota. First and 10 from their own 31-yard line. Ted Brown left side. And he's taken out of the pile by Randy McClanahan. Well, it'll be second down and 10. They're a pair of teams to be closely watched. Chuck Knox gaining every day in admiration and respect. And Dick Vermeil, of course, already acknowledged as a great coach in his young time. It's an 8.30 start. Take note of that, a game we really look forward to. You know, you hear a lot about Fer Ferguson and Cribs, and of course Jerry Butler, but Buffalo in two games have given up three points. They've got some defense up there. Second and 10, Sammy White in motion. Dills trying to get the screen off, trying to get to Ted Brown, but the Vikings reading it beautifully. Randy McClanahan was right out there, stirring the waters up in the middle of the screen. Not allowed Dave Browning to pressure Dills. There's old Mark Mullaney, better known as Fonzie to his friends on the team, the number one draft choice some years ago. They think he's their best pass rusher now, and he's played well tonight. Had a difficult time of it in the preseason game against the Rams. And his father, Ed Mullaney, sang the national anthem tonight. Some say that's in Mark's contract that his dad's got to sing the national anthem twice twice a year at the home games. I'm not sure that's true, but he sang it tonight. Passing down, keep track of Ted Hendricks. He's been in the backfield all night. Third down and ten. And now, Steve Dills did not like his setup. Said something to Ahmad Rashad. Looked at the clock. He would never get the playoff, so he calls timeout, and he slides over to visit with Bud Grant. Baseball scores. As we watch Dills come back on the field, I do sympathize with him. It's tough playing in this league after three games experience. Playing against the world champions is even more tough, and with Ted Hendricks moving around like he moves around and the variety of defenses Oakland presents you, it's difficult. That time he got to the line, he didn't know whether he had the right play called or the right blocking called, and he did the right thing. He called timeout and said, help. I've been there. Again, Dill's in there because of an injured knee to Tommy Kramer. Kramer has been moving around, still has a brace on the knee. They do not know how long he'll be out. Third down and 10 for the young quarterback out of Stanford. Ball just over his own 30-yard line. There was movement, but no flag. Dill's. And a quick reaction defensively there. Ted Hendricks was there. And also Howard Long, a rookie, second-round draft pick. Can't believe the number of times we've seen 83 in the Minnesota backfield. Well, I saw not only 83, but he had four playmates <laughs> back there in poor old Dills' face. And that brings out Greg Coleman. Ira Matthews dropping for Oakland back to his own 30-yard line. There he is. 
has never really lived up to his cut and return capabilities that he had when he was a draft pick out of Wisconsin where he led the nation in the sense that he's never really broken off a long one. And it takes the great Coleman. Minnesota bounce and goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Now, what do you do as, as we look at Matuzak when you're getting... <laughs> Hello, Tuz. Yeah, we know you got it. University of Mars, Karras once Oh, he is up <laughs> of Sistra. Is that an angry look? You know, to counteract the pass rush, what you've got to do is throw quick rhythm passes. Minnesota lays off. I would think that Puckett would go to some quick hitches, quick outs, go to his backs, do something on a quick rhythm to nullify the pass rush that he's been getting also. See if he does it. First and 10, 38-yard line of Oakland. Puckett, play action, and here comes Matt Blair. Matt Blair, who is much like Ted Hendricks, he is not given the freedom that Ted Hendricks is defensively, but the record speaks for itself. He's a very special linebacker. Well, instead of going to quick rhythm, they went to a long rhythm. That's a play pass, a very poor play pass. Nobody blocked Matt Blair. It takes longer to, for that play to develop. When you're getting a big pass rush, it's not the best thing to do as you look at old Matt Blair. That's where Jim Puckett says, I've got him. Now you got yourself in a real hole. It's second and 20. You cannot go to quick rhythm passes. Three-man front still by the Vikings on second and 20. Whittington, left side. Whittington turns the corner and accelerates out to the 40-yard line where it'll be third down and eight. That was actually a very good call. Running left behind the two. Shellen Upshaw. Well, second and 20, everybody in the house thinks you're going to pass, exactly. and, they, and they use some kind of a trap act, which they did on the on the on the linebacker outside is not all bad, and uh, they, 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 they broke it out. Whittington fell off a little bit from his previous two years last year with the Kenny's King coming to the Oakland Raider offense, and he still has exceptional running ability. Six defensive backs plus Matt Blair. Four down men. Third and eight. Bucket. My goodness. And he apparently had things mixed up with Morris Bradshaw. He wanted to fly from Bradshaw, reading man-for-man -man coverage by John Swain. It's a good thing that Bradshaw didn't change it up because Tommy Hannon came over deep. Yeah, if he read man-to-man -man coverage where he was trying to throw it up, he was throwing right into the teeth of his own. If he'd have turned it up, you're right, Giff, he'd have had an interception. Fourth down again. Our punter is getting a lot of exercise tonight. They really look just terrible for a Super Bowl team champions. Al Davis sitting up here. Looks like he's going crazy. Great they guy. No punt. Eddie Payton at his own 12-yard line. They got the block on again, Giff. The center man, Todd Christensen, the tight end. Great guy reads it, and he just really hammered this one. <laughs> it's in the end zone for the touchback, but that was a 60-yard effort by Ray Guy. And, of course, it'll be brought out to the 20. But if we are saying a lot of nice things about Ray Guy, this man deserves it. Eddie Payton is not having many opportunities to return the punts of Ray Guy. No, but the key thing there, he's had to punt five times in one and a half quarters. That's that's amazing statistic. And it'll tell you something about your offense. They're yes, not losing does. the football. Or maybe Minnesota's defense, which is stopping. Mm -hmm. First and ten, Minnesota at their own 20. Again, down by three. The only score of the night, 21-yard effort by Chris Barr for Oakland. Play action by Dills. A lot of time, dumps it to Ricky Young. Ricky Young, up close to the 28-yard line for a gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. You've got to love Ricky Young. He comes to play every day. He's as one of the maybe five or six finest blocking backs in football. He's as good a receiver out of the backfield as there is in the game today. Not a great runner, but a great team player. That's Ricky Young. There's another guy they got from New Orleans, not worked into the system yet, who I think is the best coming out of the backfield in the game today. Galbraith. Second down and two. Sensor, the tight end, has the first down up to the 39-yard line. Now, uh, Steve Dills is going to some quick rhythm passes. Exactly. Matt Millen made the stop, and Mike Davis has come back onto the field again. Uh, 
unless you're familiar with it you know that a broken fibula is not all that serious and again the length of inactivity will be determined by where the fibula is broken if it's broken low it'll be longer if it's broken higher it'll be less time first down and ten Minnesota oh my pressure against Dills Burgess Owens reading that beautifully and where did the pressure come from Dave Browning number 73 and Rod Martin on the blitz Boy, did Burgess Owens time that out Dills never saw it now when you put that kind of pressure on the quarterback it causes those kind of plays 29 yard touchdown another interception by a team that intercepted more passes in the league than any other team He's last year making a draw Trying to get the ball out on a quick screen to Ricky Young. Just didn't see over. That's what a defensive back dreams about. Caused by the great pass rush. Great pass rush and pressure like that creates big plays for the defense. Everything they've done tonight, Oakland, has been on defense. And Chris Barr is setting up to make it 10 to nothing. To the uprights, and it is Oakland 10, Minnesota nothing. And you're so right. Otis McKinney forced the turnover that the Raiders took in to a 21-yard field goal. And now Burgess Owens has gone in from 29 yards out, picking off the youngster Steve Dills. All right, here we go. Here's the low angle look. You see 53, Rod Martin putting the pressure on 73. Browning, you see Ricky Young here trying to wait for the reception, which never gets to him, but you see Owens go in. Yesterday, there were three defensive touchdowns in the National Football League. Defensive touchdowns. All three of those teams won. Nobody lost that made a defensive touchdown. That's a ball. Well, as you watch the Oakland Raiders, I think of something Jim Finks, the general manager of the Bears, told me at the Bears training camp this summer. He said, Oakland has a way of fitting a team together. The right players for the right spot. And he talked about the acquisitions of Otis McKinney from the Giants and Burgess Owens from the Jets. They didn't prove out at either place, both losing teams. Here, they become big winners. They fit. And that was Jim Finks's point. On, on, and on. John Matuzak, Cedric Hardman, Ted Hendricks himself. Exactly. They found the spot for them. And Jim Bucket. Chris Barr, short kick, flag is down as the Vikings cover it at the 28-yard line. Again, a flag down. We might have an offside by Oakland. Yes, that's the indication. David Huffman was on the ball for the Vikings. Howard, it has something to do with sound organizations and good discipline management. That's what wins in the National Football League. As we watch the number 41 on the kicking team was offside will re-kick with a five-yard penalty the teams that win like businesses that win are the ones that are well constructed and well managed and well organized and the Oakland Raiders under Al Davis have been just that Ted Watts was offside Ted Watts first round draft pick compliments of the Dave Casper trade to Houston Howard Long who is playing tonight a defensive tackle a rookie from Villanova was taken in the second round. Confidence of Dave Casper. And they will have a number two pick for Dave Casper coming up in 82. Let's watch this from the end zone. I like the view. You get an opportunity to see the gaps open. He is Eddie Payton. And here comes Eddie Payton. to the 27 yard line as Peyton goes down a flag of companies and that should push it back half the distance looked like a clip against the Vikings Howard are making the point as we look at Bud Grant about good organizations the Vikings have been just just that Bud Grant gets a lot of credit and rightfully so for this team Jim Finks was a general manager to help construct this team he gets credit Mike Lynn more recently gets credit but there's a little man sitting to my right over here, one Max Winter, the president of this club, who deserves a great deal of Number credit. Number 52, illegal push in the back on the run back. First down. Dennis Johnson, the offending Viking. Interesting, too, it was Max Winters who signed Bud Grant to play basketball with the Lakers when he came out of the University of Minnesota. He's a great, great man. He does know where it's at. On first and ten, Ted Brown. Has
Has anybody else carried the ball tonight but Ted Brown? I don't think so. I don't think anybody else has carried the ball. Jerry Klein, anybody? No. Yep, Ted Brown, the only ball carried tonight, which tells you again the basic weakness of the Minnesota ground game. Look How about that? that? Ten rushes, 11 yards. Uh, this team has difficulty rushing the ball, obviously, and you need to rush the ball some. As I mentioned, they were next to last in the league a year ago. They have not improved a great deal upon it. They do have Tony Galbraith, acquired from a trade, but he is apparently not ready to step into the offense. Second down and nine, Ricky Young. And this is the Viking offense. They run Ted Brown, throw to Ricky Young. I hate to be redundant, Howard, but that time, Ted Hendricks again loomed large in the face of Dills, made him throw the ball higher than he wanted to. He couldn't zip it into Ricky to give him room to run. He does things that are suddenly effective as well as things that are not so suddenly <laughs> effective. Third down and five, a pickup of three by Ricky Young. Steve Dills on the night. The key was the interception. He had one a week ago in Tampa Bay late in the game by Neil Colsey. When the score was 14 to 13 and Minnesota was in field goal range, Colsey took it all the way for a touchdown. Oakland jumping around, trying to upset the young quarterback. Pass complete over the middle, and a flag is down. The receiver was shot, but again, a flag is down where you usually get the holding call. And that was your classic matchup. Rashad against Hayes. Rashad won the battle that time, but not by much. Hayes is right on him. He's bring a it back. beautifully graceful receiver. Uh, He's a brilliant athlete. It may be in grace he compares with Swan. He's not quite as acrobatic, but the two of them are so exceptional. I don't think there's been any better receivers. It's hard to say who is the best, but Rashad has been as good as any I've ever seen. There he is. He added two years to my career, Howard. Maybe three. <laughs> Jim Huff, the offending Minnesota Viking, half the distance to the goal. How does a team like Seattle let a guy like that go? It'll be third down and 14. I don't know. Kills. Ted Brown. Far short of the first down at the 18-yard line. Put there by Howard Long, the rookie out of Villanova. You can go back further, Howard. How did St. Louis let him go to Buffalo? And how did Buffalo let him go to Seattle? Buffalo let him go. I remember the juice was there, and he couldn't believe it. You know what the Vikings gave up for Rashad to Seattle? What? Bench warmer Bob Lurchma. <laughs> yeah, I had lunch with him today. At the at the, the end of his career. The old giant. <laughs> That's right. That's That was the trade. Ira Matthews, 37-yard line. Waiting the punt of Greg Coleman. Another flag is down. Ira Matthews thought better of taking it on the run he would have had to have kept it in full stride and is down at midfield but again a flag is down at the line of scrimmage Lutzmer is really a local hero since you brought his name up he's doing a lot of commercials he's he's a penalty great. against Minnesota they were in motion but Oakland will have good field position he, he's got the local Minnesota newspaper you know the Vikings Illegal newspaper motion, 54 <laughs> offense penalty refused first down well, you know, Frank, he came up to see you. Well, I had a lot guys. of fun with him. He was, we like to get into this business, and he does a series of commercials for a bank here in Minneapolis. He is a local hero. He was telling me, Fran, he walked into the stadium with you his last year last year, and you like to walk with him because everybody wanted his autograph. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Bob Lutzema. First down, 10. Mark Van Egan, left side. And the workers of the Raiders over the past seven years. That's an eight-yard pickup. It'll be second down and two. And, you know, I find something very interesting about Van Egan. Steady, reliable, always there, good receiver. But he has carried the ball almost 1,500 times. And his longest run from scrimmage is 34 yards. Now, you know that that's is an awful lot of knockdowns. That is. That remaining here in the first half. From the Shenango Valley, the Red Raiders have told you. Second down, two. Van Egan. Stays on his feet, lunges up close to a first down. I believe he'll have it. All right, if the character of this Viking defensive team is going to be tested right here, because they're going to have a chance in this game, they have got to keep Oakland out of scoring position before the end of this first half. They played pretty well the first half. I'm not giving up a touchdown. 
But they're going to have to show their medal right here to stay in the game as you look at Flores. This is the first first down here in the second quarter. The big play of Burgess Owens interception for a 29 yard touchdown. Morris Bradshaw. Bradshaw powering close to another first down inside the 30. He's in the arms of number 44, Walt Williams, recently acquired, as Fran mentioned earlier, from Detroit. Howard, that's not too bad a pass. You, you, you uh, have no threat of, a, of, of getting sacked. You got a man 10 yards off your receiver. You get a seven or eight yard gain. Well, nothing wrong with that. That's not what Oakland really wants to do, but it's, it's there. I agree with you, and not only that, you're now virtually within field goal range with Chris Barr. They'll be hurrying to get this playoff just before the two-minute warning. Bucket. Gets it out to Raymond Chester, and Raymond Chester is short of the first down, but down at the 21-yard line, taken out of bounds there by Kurt Knopf. Two-minute warning coming up, and we'll be back with more action after this message from the National Football League. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League and, of course, Jim Pluckett. 156 on the clock, and as we have already pointed out, if Minnesota is going to stay in this ball game, they need to come up with a defensive effort right here. It'll be second down and two. The ball inside the 22-yard line of the Vikings, and Pluckett trots onto the field with the play. Well, they had a big conference over there, second and one. Uh, that's the time the coaches normally send in the play, second and one. When you have second and 30, they scuff the ground and say, call it yourself. Three tight ends are in. That would indicate run. Christensen, Ramsey, and Chester. And play action. And a man open is Todd Christensen. Six points. Oh, boy. Here is a young man that started his career as a running back, Todd Christensen. Oakland, as they do with so many reclamation projects, picked him up for practically nothing. Right out with the Giants, I believe. They turned him into a tight end, and they say he has a great future there. His end zone red replay. It's a little uh, rollout action. Faking to Kenny King and... As they called him in Dallas, Toddzilla runs the sideline. Tommy Hannon was just short there trying to get to him. I know Gil Brad was high on him down in Dallas, but they let him go, and he bounced around and found a home, as so many do in Oakland. Key reception in the playoffs, remember, against Houston. Very similar play. Good. That's far. When all, it's no good. When all else fails, Gift, the Vikings can block field goals and extra points. They've blocked more, I think, than any team in the world. Alan Page blocked 14 of them while he played here, and Matt Blair has blocked, blocked 12 while he's been here. I'm not sure who got the hand up here. Let's see. But they do this as well as anybody. There's Blair going up. You see him up high. That's Joe Sensor beside him. I think Blair got it. It is picked up by, I believe, number 81, Joe Sensor. In any event, you're so right. They've been doing it for years. But you do not score a lot of points that way, and they are down 16 to nothing. 150 remaining in the half. Bloomington, Minnesota. So many memories with the Vikings. What's your greatest game here? What do you remember most? I think I remember the first game here when we opened against the Chicago Bears and beat them 38 to 13, and nobody in the world thought we could beat the Bears on opening day of the New and franchise in 61. And number three draft pick came off the bench to throw four touchdown passes, I think, to William Tarkenton. This will be out of bounds. They'll back it up five yards. And the coach at that time, Norm Van Brocklin. Norm liked your offense, didn't he, friend? He liked that scrambling a lot. He didn't really understand the scramble because he never was one to run very much. Actually, I played here in 1959 against the St. Louis Cardinals. When the Cardinals were leaving Chicago, they were looking for a home. They played here. They played in Buffalo and, of course, finally settled in St. Louis. I was very precocious. You know, tradition, I 12. <laughs> a tradition is going to be lost. You think of the Vikings. You think of the frozen tundra of, the, of Bloomington and Metropolitan Stadium and ice and snow. And I know the Rams used to hate to come here in those championship games. Now all that's going to be lost as they go inside to play. Quite frankly, I'd rather see them play outside. 63,000 capacity stadium right downtown. The Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome will open next year. Here comes Eddie Payton. 
Eddie oh, Payton. Look at him Watch go. Out. Watch out. Watch out. Could take it all the way. He yeah. will. How about that? We got a ball game again. Steady Eddie. The oh, length oh. of the field of 100 yards, and the crowd has risen as one. Well, I guess, Howard, it must be you and I. Oh, I'll tell you. Watch this. Walter's brother, Eddie. There he goes. He had his back foot on the goal line. He breaks tackles, and then he just turns it on. Jeff Seaman, number 50 out in front, but doesn't do a lot of good. Gets a little bump there from Gord. And he almost put the ball up too soon. And there you are, Aileen. <laughs> Eddie said, say hello to my mother in Jackson. So Eddie just said hello himself, and that misconversion looms very large for the Oakland Raiders. It does. Officially 99 yards. Hi, Mom. We've already said hello for you, Eddie. That's great. It seems that he likes Monday nights. We told you before about the 98-yard return against Bud Grant and an 87-yard punt return that very same night. Since he went on to Kansas City, they cut him. Maybe he was cut by Toronto last year. And here he is from a camera behind the end zone. He had, he had some blocking, but in these type of situations, runners have to do a lot of it on their own, and he did. But old Nord there, 49, gives him a little help. Barr is trying to chase a little bit. He put that, I saw Sammy White against Detroit put the ball up like that five yards before he got into the end zone. He got tackled by Barney and fumbled, and the Vikings lost the touchdown. Peyton almost did it too soon then. Well, it's a ball game, boys. Yep. Out of nowhere. Yep. He came within two yards of a record held by, would you believe, Lance Rensel? I saw Lance Rensel do it here. 1965 against Baltimore, 101 yards. This is amazing. The chance from the bleacher bugs, Eddie, Eddie. And that can spark a team just before halftime. Oakland would be well advised to come back down the field using their timeouts, of which they have three, and try and get three. Try and take a little steam out of a Minnesota Viking team that was really dragging their heels until Eddie Payton set sail. That kind of play will set you on fire. Here is another speedster, Malcolm Barnwell. The seventh round pick from Virginia Union with great speed. And they will kick away from the speed to Ira Matthews. Matthews trying to get outside. Now he has running room. And Matthews helps the Oakland cause out over the 45 to the 46 where John Swain made the stop. This has not been, my friends, an uninteresting game. It's well, got some good elements in it. Well, we got time yet. Minute 26. Let's see what Plunkett does here. The crowd trying to catch their breath. They had some very dull football up until now. 39-yard return there by Ira Matthews and Oakland with three timeouts, 126 on the clock, leading 16 to 7, has a first and 10 inside their own 47. Blunkett has the time, finds the receiver over the middle, Van Egan. Vikings are indicating incomplete. And that's affirmed. Mullaney once again pressuring Plunkett. And the official had a great view of it. He was in terrific position to call it. I'm sure it must have hit the ground. It must have hit the ground. First. It was a pickup. Good pickup, but a pickup. <laughs> Again, pressure on Plunkett. Second down and ten. Vikings now gone to a four-man line gift. Holloway is in. Thinking pass. Bradshaw and Branch move to the right. Copy your screen. That's Raymond Chester. He's like a wide receiver. Plunkett. Looking deep for Branch, he's double covered. Hannon steps in front of it, but I believe out of bounds. Yes. You're right. You can say throw deep all you want, but they're playing for that, and it's just self-defeating. Well, the Vikings' defensive philosophy for the past hundred years has been let them complete the ball in front of you, but don't let them get the home run. You Not a bad philosophy. 
Not bad at all. It's worked pretty well for them over the years. Defensively among 28 teams in the National Football League, they were 24th against the pass, 25th against the rush. And once again, they won the Central Division. Because of a gray-headed fellow there by the name of Grant, who doesn't do a bad job. Third and ten. Kenny King. Upshaw's out in front. King goes down after the gain of a couple, and they will bring out the punting unit of the Oakland Raiders with 105 on the clock remaining in the half. I would say that is a very interesting call with a minute and 10 seconds left to go in the half, third and 10 to run the ball. You're saying I'm just going to sit deep. Yep. Go. I'm going to give up on the pass, and I'm just going to kick the ball out of here and uh, hope to keep the scores it is. Well, one thing Ray Guy does not want to do because he can better believe that they will have a punt block on. That is for sure. Taking as much time as they can. There's Eddie Payton. He's still stoked up. As well he should be. He has brought the Vikings back into this game. Hey guys, that long count. Seconds ticking down inside 25. Hangs it high. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is going to be marked out of bounds somewhere around the six yard line. Beautiful thing to watch. It was academic because I do not believe with any kind of punt with the Vikings try anything risky at this point with 14 seconds remaining in the half. And they're only down by six points. I think you'll see the, they're within a touchdown and a field goal of the lead. Kip, I think you'll see the old quarterback fall down trick. 16 to 7. Little Eddie Payton going 99 yards. You characterize the Fran, an interesting game. Both teams losing their openers. Oakland knocked off 9 to 7 by the Denver Broncos. And Tampa Bay taking the Vikings on Saturday night, September the 5th, 21 to 13. Ooh. Ricky Young, he's nailed there by a hard charging Howard Long, who has been in on a lot of calls this rookie from Villanova already tonight. And with Willie Jones out for the season with an unrelated injury, unrelated to football, that is, they could use a rapidly developing Howard Law. That's the end of the first half. And we'll be back with halftime activities after this message. And then a word from our local station. All right, set to go. Chris Barr will kick off. And Eddie Payton, single deep man. There he is. And we would suspect that Brother Walton one of the greatest runners of all time in this game is watching his brother perform tonight. Short kick. Peyton made a move on it. You better cover it, Eddie. That ball is alive. Touchback, and Minnesota will take over their first possession from their 20-yard line as we look at the halftime statistics dominated, as you can see, convincingly by Oakland, particularly in net, uh, net total yards. Not only that, but the, the odds rushing reflects what we emphasized in the first half, Frank. Only nine yards on the ground by this Minnesota team. With so unbalanced an attack, you can't go anywhere. And yet each year, 11 out of the last 14, they have won the Central Division of the NFC. Tony Galbraith is in there, number 32, recently acquired from New Orleans. As Dills and first down at the man open, Sammy White. Sammy had to wait for it or it could have been six. The reception is good to the 36-yard line of Oakland. As either Oakland blew the zone, I think, that Burgess Owens, who was down there pounding his fist, forgot to cover up for Lester Hayes. I don't know, Giff. He's got Lester Hayes man on man. Now, Lester's covering him man on man. He's trying to, but Sammy put some kind of move on him. And he just beat him bad. Sammy White can play. He did stayed away from Lester Hayes. He gave him a couple of jukes. Froze Lester Hayes for a second, avoided the one hit that Hayes had allowed by the rules, and the Vikings are at the 36-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Play action, Tony Galbraith, the pass overthrown. Tony Galbraith, by the way, good receiver a year ago in New Orleans with 57 receptions. He'll fit into the Minnesota attack. I'm surprised that he played him. Bud usually keeps them on the bench for at least a month, doesn't he, to learn the system. 
But I think he's the very best in the league coming out of the backfield. By the way, the Patriots, with all their great personnel, who've lost their first two games last Sunday against the Eagles, 13-3, have signed Sam Van Cunningham. He is back with the Pats. Of course, he was out an entire year, all of last year, as a holdout. Second down and ten. Play action again. Dills completes the ball and then is, I believe, short hop by Lester Hayes, ruled incomplete. That's an interesting play. Looked like he might have had the ball. Under the new determination of a reception, I think you're right, Fred. That's that what? ball is in possession at all. You do not have to have, do something well, that here's is... here's an end zone replay. Indicative or close to the game. It looked like he had it to me. Got it flipped out. Good play by Burgess Owens, and uh, they don't get the fumble recovery. The old rule used to be it. the old rule used to be on a reception you had to come down with it and be able to do something common to the game. They changed that. If you have possession at all, then it's rule of completion. In any of this, incomplete. Third down and ten. Well, you got to think he's going to get to a shot sometime. Uh oh, quick snap, shotgun. What you spoke up a moment ago, Fran, but a flag is down also. Pass taken by Sammy White. Short of a first down, and a flag is down. And you got a rough in the passer flag, too, back there, Gip. And it might be offsetting. Joe Campbell was in there chasing Steve Dills, or rather Howard Long, the rookie from Villanova. Until that bad snap from Senna, the very problem you expressed with the shotgun, Dills was getting excellent protection. He really was. And he was delivering the football. Right. Our referee again tonight, Gene Barth, discussing the penalty. First with his staff, and now Ted Hendricks is getting in there, have his say. This is going to hurt the Raiders and help the Vikings. Hmm. That's the third time tonight we've had roughing. We're going to use the 5-15 rule. We've got illegal motion on the right tackle offense. That penalty is refused. We enforce the 15-yard spearing penalty against 73 defense. First down. Well, here we are. 73 is Dave Browning. That's, that's who they're giving it. But that's 75 Campbell hitting him. It wasn't 73. That's an interesting penalty. I don't know. Yes, I don't know either. I don't know what, what, what they're calling it. That was not spearing. He hit the man up... Uh, Around First down and ten. Bills is back, score. and here come the Raiders. Storming in. Hit Hendricks in there quickly. Forcing Dills out of the pocket, and the loss is all the way back to the 30-yard line. A loss of nine. The fourth sack of the night. And the offensive line of the Minnesota Vikings just not picking up the multiple ways in which Oakland comes with their pass rush. Well, Ted Hendricks is so far tonight the most dominant player on the field once again. Yep. 14 years of it. But the Vikes still have momentum going, even with that play. Sammy White split to the left. Rashad, bottom of your screen, covered closely by Lester Hayes. Dills, was his arm in motion? I believe they'll say that it was. Kids getting hurt now, and they really don't have anybody behind him. They've got a rookie named Wade Wilson who has not played it down. That's right. And here's Dills going back under pressure again. This time the ball is just going to slip out of his hands as he tries to bring it forward. Watch here. It just slipped out of his hands. There's another rookie, Johnny Robinson, right in the face of Dills. You didn't see Hendricks in there this time because Ted backed off playing the pass. He knew what was coming. It was an obvious passing down, and he backed off. Third down, 19. I would think the Vikings would go for something about a 10-yard play to get in position for the field goal. At, uh, from that position, 10 yards up the field, Dan Markin kick it. Terry LeCount split to the right. Sammy White, top of your screen, along with Rashad. Fired and is caught. I believe it's ruled complete at the 18-yard line. Well, give Mr. Dells, as you see Matuzak patting him on the head, a lot of credit. He threw the ball while being hit, falling down. Sammy he threw White. Well to Sammy White. Watch this. Here's Dills going back. 
You're going to see him get hit just as he tries to deliver the ball. He's hanging in there good and tough. There comes Browning. There comes big twos. And he still delivers a strike with that kind of pressure. The kid's tough. Here's Rick Danmeyer, 37-yard attempt. Straightaway kicker. They're unusual today. And maybe that's why. That just barely crawled over the crossbars. And now we perhaps understand why Bud Grant did not want to try a 52-yard attempt early in the game. But the Vikings draw closer. We'll be back. Oakland. Well, they may have dominated in statistics, but right now they are a touchdown and a conversion from being behind as Minnesota gets three points on the right foot of Rick Danmeyer. And I still say it was a very questionable call on the spearing. You may disagree, but I think it's a questionable call. You made your point. Danmeyer to kick off. Ira Matthews, 43. Malcolm Barnwell deep for the Raiders. We would assume that Dan Meyer would try and get the ball to Matthews. He just lines up and aims it at Matthews. They're staying away from the speed of Barnwell. And Matthews steps to the outside. That's a nice return out to the 32-yard line. Well, certainly Eddie Payton's kick run just before the end of the half changed the whole mood of this game, the whole tempo, the whole rhythm. One mistake by Oakland now capitalization by Minnesota it's the kind of game that Bud Grant has so often been able to steal you get Bud Grant in a close game and he's tough he he's got him he knows how to win he's uh, he's been a great coach Plunkett, eight for 18 76 yards that pro class all pro class style of quarterbacking he remains the quarterback, hands off to Kenny King. Kenny King gets away from Matt Blair down the side and bobbles the ball. There's a scramble, and Minnesota does not recover before it goes out of bounds, and Oakland will get the advance of the run and the fumble. For Minnesota to have gotten that ball, they would have had to achieve possession and control before going out of bounds. Which that they, they failed to do. And there's Kenny King. You'll see him run right by Matt Blair here. He tries to stick a hand out. Can't stop Kenny King that way. He gets hit pretty good. Drops the ball. Minnesota had a chance to make a play here. That was Walt Williams diving for the ball, and then Tommy Hannon, who did not come up with it. The Raiders have the ball. The run and the fumble at the 45-yard line of Minnesota. Van Egan. And the steady one inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Behind Art Shell and Gene Upshaw. Mm -hmm. Money in the bank there. Gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Hard to believe that starting string of Gene Upshaw, who, by the way, is the president of the NFL Players Association. You'll be reading his name a lot in the next year. He's the man who says the owners have no incentive to win in the National Football League. But he has not missed a start since 1967. That's unbelievable. I'd like him to tell some of the owners I know that. <laughs> Second down and three. Pluckett changing off. And the little hitch in what? front of the defensive cornerback that was Walt Williams. And Williams was playing off Bradshaw 12 to 14 yards. I was just going to point that he was at least 12 yards off. He had no zone coverage deep. And uh, that's the type of thing Oakland has to do. We've said it all night. It's against their philosophy of the pass offense. But uh, if they're to be successful tonight, that's what they got to do. I did not believe that one. We he was hard really time off. showing you something like that, but Walt Williams was at least 12 to 14 yards off Bradshaw. Plunkett saw it, very wisely changed the play. First down, open. 33-yard line. Minnesota in the 4-3. Hand off Kenny King. Finds an opening. Gets another first down, or very close to it. As they'll mark it short at the 24. I'll never understand how Oakland got Kenny King so cheaply in that deal with Houston. He's a super back. Well, he had only carried the ball three times for Houston in 1979. And indeed, they did get him cheap. Two seventh round draft picks and Jack Tatum, who was at the end of his career. You got an injury down there to one of the Vikings. It's Curtin off. Curtin off, the safety man who has been shaken up. appears to be all right. And there 
there's the youngster we spoke of. That's the backup quarterback with Tommy Kramer hurt. That's Wade Wilson, a rookie from East Texas State, eighth round draft pick. Behind him, oh, Fran, you'll have to get your polyester off and slide down there. Well, I've, exactly. been by, I've been by the phone all night, and Bud hadn't given me the call yet. No, I he saw just, you talking to him today. He just stoned me, though. I tell you, I have to be <laughs> concerned about young Steve Dills. He's yes. been taking an awful beating back then. And as you mentioned, Wade Wilson has no experience at all, hasn't even hardly taken a snap. Second down and one as they have marked the ball at the 24-yard line. Van Egan rumbles through the middle to the first down, close to the 20. Well, this is nothing but just line up. It's all country hardball, power, offense, and uh, they're working. Behind a very strong offensive line, Dalby at center, Mickey Marvin, who's five, probably just only now playing up his potential. Gene Upshaw, of course, we've talked about Art Shell and Henry Lawrence on the other side. The good teams, all those the year and the time of the passing game, can run the football. And you're seeing it done right now by the Raiders and the Vikings can't run it. Knopf is back in for Minnesota at safety. First and ten, the ball right on the 20-yard line of Minnesota. King, left side. Eeks out, two, perhaps three. Oh, now we get a flag. Somebody now who's just a little over-eager. Well, a number of majors against the Raiders tonight has been really evidence of undisciplined play, and I think this may be against the Raiders again. It'll be offsetting. The down They did not get the number of the Viking, but it was Upshaw for the Raiders. Fifty-nine, we are told that would be Matt Blair, and Matt Blair will hear about that from Bud Grant tomorrow. Bud Grant does not tolerate 15-yard penalties for personal fouls or unnecessary roughness. Yeah, if he would tolerate it, it would be for Matt Blair. He might, he might keep him around. Second down and eight. That's a Van Egan following the block of Kenny King and Van Egan. Inside the 15, down around the 12-yard line. Giff, as I watch Van Egan with the number 30 on his back run, he doesn't have a lot of speed, but he's a hard-nosed player. I think of a great player that played at the purple jersey in this stadium for many years, one Bill, Bill Boom, Brown. Boom Brown, who wore number 30 very proudly. He still comes out here late at night and runs around <laughs> with it on. <laughs> I'm sure he does. But Interesting call at this point. Third and a long two. You think Bud looks shook up? I've never seen him shook up. Derek Jensen, 31, has replaced Van Egan. Kenny King, the other setback. The Raiders will go to the air. Bucket has forever. Fires complete into the end zone. It's Morris Bradshaw. No <laughs> flags down. Touchdown. Oakley he had a third forever. and three. He yeah. had forever, Frank, to throw that ball. Now, you know, that's how you can become a great quarterback when you have that kind of that's protection. Right. It makes the game very easy. As you look at this, I don't know if you'll see it or not, you'll see him forever back there. He throws to Bradshaw in a crowd. He had Branch breaking open. Look at this. This is forever. Look at Branch broke wide open, but he saw Bradshaw and got it in for the touch. Impressive Morris drive. Bradshaw, who is replacing an injured Bob Chandler. And we hope Bob's doing well, looking on, following his surgery for a ruptured spleen last week. And the conversion is good. We're going to look at him again. He just right, works he around there until he gets open. Yep, he just goes back to the end zone, just tries to find open spot. Branch is underneath trying to clear out. As you'll see, a lot of people around Bradshaw. Plunkett did do a good thing. He threw it, threw it behind him so he can make the catch. And an almost got a finger on, but an almost won't do. The Raiders, 23, Minnesota 10. An observation we were making in the booth. Oakland, the champions came out. They did what they had to do. They went back to playing just hard, straight football, and they took it the length of the field. Chris Bosch kicks off. Eddie Payton settles in at the two-yard line. And this time, there was no gap, and Eddie Payton takes the pounding at the 22-yard line. First there, Derek Ramsey for Oakland. 
Jim Puckett with his second touchdown pass of the night. Earlier hit, hitting Todd Christensen from 21 yards out. <laughs> you know that is Frank. <laughs> Who's I that behind have, him? I think I have a hint. You can cover this country. He's everywhere. All right, let's see what the Vikings can do in response to that. 8.44 remaining in the third quarter. Both teams looking for their initial win of the season. Both divisional champions, and of course, the Oakland Raiders, the Super Bowl champions, as a wild card a year ago. Tony Galbert, his first attempt <laughs> in a Viking uniform, piled up after a gain of about one. That's, it's just, it's, it's sad. It's sad. Uh, it, they're, no, they're trying to run it, they just cannot run it. And I don't know the answer to that, but they, uh, there are no holes. There's no place for the back to run. Second and nine. Jerry Burns, their offensive coach, once said, oh, my tombstone will be second and nine. He hates second <laughs> and nine, and any coach would. <laughs> Net rushing yards for the Vikings tonight, 11 yards. Good Lord. Open Raiders, as we said, 120. Bills. Goes low. Rashad cannot shovel it up. Covered there by Lester Hayes. That's big Gene. As Frank noted, president of the National Football League Player Representatives Association. In the midst of an impending labor management hassle, you can be sure it will come up. Contract expires July 15th, 1982. Third down, long eight. Rashad, white, split to the left. Bills is back. Ricky Young has the first down and more. And the Vikings get out of a tough situation as Ricky Young and Bills combine for the first down. It's a great individual effort by Ricky Young. It is, and Bills gets a little time to throw, and every time he's had time to throw, he's delivered a strike. And watch the effort by Ricky Young. It's a typical Ricky Young effort, day in, day out. Makes, he put a good makes, move on Lester Hayes. You know, you think about 11 yards run is rushing for the Vikings. Here you have a young quarterback with enough pressure as it is, and now all the pressure's on him now. No running game. He's got to throw to have a chance. And Every down. Of course, Oakland is aware of that. They almost disregard the run as well they should. Incomplete, intended for Sensor. A little too much smoke on that ball, even for Sensor with the good hands to handle. <laughs> I've been watching Hendricks. He's been dropping off against the pass for the very reason you suggested. They know the pass is coming every play, but I wonder when he's going to start coming at the quarterback. Again. Well, you know, the best defense is to rush that pass, and, 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 and Hendricks, I think, is much more effective when he's back in the quarterback's face than he is dropping back down the field. I agree with you. Back over Hendricks' record, 26 career interceptions, 12 fumble recoveries, 21 block kicks. And he is a great player. Second and 10. Bills again with time. And no, the official on the far side of the field says incomplete. It was. And I'm not knows it. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think Ahmad would have made that reaction if he didn't think he caught the ball. Let's watch and see. Make your own judgment. Well, that's a break in. Uh -huh. Sorry. Ahmad, you. <laughs> Sorry. Ahmad wants to be an actor. That was he? a Willie Randolph play. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even close. I watched his TV show last night. He's very good. Yes, he, is he is. He is excellent. He's some quality human being. He's a little frustrated. He only caught two balls last week when they threw 63. And they haven't gone to him much tonight. He wants to get some numbers on the board and catches. Third down and 10. And coming. That's it. And a sack by Rod Martin. You might point out that Amon Rashad has a string of 62 consecutive games in which he's caught one or more passes, and that's in jeopardy because he is goose eggs for tonight. It's fourth down. Ray Coleman in, Ira Matthews dropping for Oakland. There he is, at about his 33-yard line. That little breeze in his back. A lot of breeze in his back. Oh, and Coleman had to hurry in, and he gets a boomer. And he gets a rough in the, rough in the kicker. Flag is down. 
Matthews is also down, and Minnesota will pick up a first down on a roughing the penalty. I and mean, then roughing the kicker. I'll tell you what. I can't believe the number of majors against Oakland. Major, which shows how dominant they are, because they had major penalties four or five tonight, and they're still leading 23 to 10. Here it goes. I, I think it's Ted Hendricks. Well, Lester Hayes went by him, and here comes somebody else. Well, who's well, hitting him? Todd Christensen got a little bit. Hendricks tried to oh, stop. Well, I don't, I don't. That's no. That is absurd. That is absurd. That's a bad call. That is the worst. That, those punters are sacred. The punter moves into Hendricks, oh. and Hendricks gets penalized. I they, do not believe that. They practice it. I do not believe it. Hendricks, I don't care what they do. That's. The officials are supposed to have a measure of intelligence. And he's sitting right there watching it. Third down and first down and ten, rather, following the weapon. Sensor on the screen. The flag is down. Sensor out over the 35 to the 37. Gain of about five, but again, a flag is down. Continue. I can't get over that last call against Hendricks. You know, that really wasn't even a judgment call. <laughs> Minnesota will be backed up on the holding call. 6.55 remaining in the third quarter. 23-10, Oakland over Minnesota. Holding, 78 offense, still first down. Steve Riley, left tackle, holding Minnesota. Well, that's the evidence of that crunching Minnesota ground attack we've been describing to you all evening. Second quarter was exciting. They had minus two in the second quarter. Is that a, a net of 11, fellas? Goodness. First and 20. This is Galbraith. Galbraith shows you a little nifty footwork, working his way out to the 34-yard line for a 10-yard pickup. John Matuzak sliding out to make the stop. The interesting thing to me there, they used a play pass action. They faked the run in order to throw the ball. Oakland kind of went for it. I don't know why they did, but they did. Second down and 10. Well, I think Oakland now has decided they're going to just play pass defense. They put in their five defensive backs. They're going to leave Matuzic and Hendricks and bring in all backs. And the big tight end steps out of bounds near the 37-yard line. Otis McKinley was there to make sure. So yeah, that first down. That McKinney hits like a linebacker. Well, you know, Howard, the, the Oakland defensive backs are young and big. Burgess Owens is the most veteran guy back there to kind of hold them together. But uh, they're young and big and fast. Uh, they're looking group of people. And they got a number one draft choice, Ted Watts, who we haven't seen that they think is going to be a great defensive back. Well, we did see him briefly, but... Third down and seven. Bob Rashad split to the right. Sammy White goes out left. Here comes the pass rush. Stills has to hurry, and he gets it to Sensor, but he drops it. That time he was on target. Under pressure, he hits Sensor right on the hands, and that brings up fourth down. Hey, Sensor had a great year last year with... 42 receptions right, as we look again. Low angle, low angle with the reverse uh, verse angle. Here we go. We'll see it come right in the center, and you'll see him drop it again, I promise you. Ooh, great basketball player with great hands. He didn't have them then. The kid delivered it perfectly. Great Coleman, who drew the roughing penalty a few moments ago, set to punt again. Ira Matthews at his 22-yard line. Coleman with a fine, booming kick that drives Matthews all the way back to his 10-yard line. And good coverage on the punt at the 15-yard line. Fred McNeil is there to meet Ira Matthews. We have 547 remaining in the third quarter. Again, 23 to 10, the Raiders over the Vikings. If you're a football player, you like the temperature tonight, right around 65 degrees. Showers were predicted. We have had none. As you look at Metropolitan Stadium. And you saw that flag. Well, there's a strong wind here. Oakland is going against that wind right now. They would like to use this clock up and not give up anything and, and have the win the fourth quarter. 
Well, that's much more important than people realize. It really is. Psychologically and physically. Van Egan. He'll work on the clock for you as he gets four yards out to the 20. It'll be second and six. So to eat up the clock, you run the football. Oakland's going to be running it. I'm sure Minnesota figures they will, too. See if they can stop it. Van Egan. Ripped off 3,000 yard seasons. 60, rather 76, 77, 78. Over 800 for the past two years. Steady, reliable. You have to play. Not a breakaway threat. But he can really hurt you. All right, Whittington. Talk of gain of one. It'll be third down and four as Doug Martin, the little brother of the Giants, George Martin, and on the stop with Matt Blair. Don't forget Thursday night, Eagles against the Bills. Special starting time, 8.30 Eastern time. Two unbeaten teams, each boasting sterling defenses. At the same time, the Bills with enough offense to have scored 66 points in their first two games. If the Vikings had gone to six defensive backs, I would not be surprised to see Oakland run in this situation of third and four. Ball just over the 20-yard line. Great drop back. Bucket has Branch wide open, working against Walt Williams man on man. And it wasn't close. No, it wasn't. The Vikings decided to blitz that time. When you blitz, you leave your cornerbacks man on man. Walt Williams, again, was put on waivers two weeks ago by the Lions. Now starting for the Vikings. And he wasn't close as right. But not many people are on Cliff Branch when it's one on one. You have to respect that speed. He maybe has slowed up a step, but he had so much when he started 10 years ago at about 9-1 that, well, that really doesn't make any difference. How about slowing up to 9-2? First and 10, 37-yard line. Flag is down. Bucket going for Whittington. Incomplete. And Willie Teal almost had a second interception. Gene Barth and his crew getting a lot of action tonight. Motion indicated against the Vikings. The Raiders, Howard, have been successful with the short passing game and the running game. They go to the long pass again, and what happens? Danger. Should have been intercepted. Yeah. Danger. I don't quite understand it. Again, the options being explained to Matt Blair. Illegal motion, 78 offense, penalty refused, second down. And instead of a first and 15, Minnesota wanted a second and 10. I taught you well, bud. That's a good decision. That's reflective of the finest winning record in the National Football League. They haven't, been, Oakland Raiders. They haven't been bad on Monday night, have they, Art? <laughs> <laughs> They've lost once out of 18 appearances. And I remember when in Buffalo. Inside handoff, Whittington. And Whittington negotiates his way up to the 42-yard line for a gain of five. Or rather, Kenny King it is. And Kenny King is hurt. You see his face. This would be a very tough injury for the Raiders. Pain etched in it. Kenny King is down. With his teammates around him. What a spark he gave the Raiders oh. a year ago when he came from Houston. Gene Upshaw, the senior citizen of the Oakland Raiders in more ways than one, standing by. You know, you can play this game for a long time. You can watch a lot of football. You never like to see injuries. You never like to see this. You never like to see the pain of it. It's inevitable, not pleasant. Again, there's Kitty King on the night. Right, here we have a low angle look at Plunkett handed off to Kenny King. Inside handoff, straight blocking. Let's see if we can see the hit. It's hit up high. Well, while we're watching, Kenny King is up on his feet, and I would almost have to think that he got the wind knocked out of him because that is the most agonizing feeling there is, and now he appears to be all right. Boy, he, do, he does look all right. And I think no you're right. quite like it. When the wind is gone, you can't breathe, you can't catch your breath, and you think it's all over. We'll get a report. Third down and five. 4.05 and the clock moving here in the third quarter. 23 to 10. The Raiders, who have dominated 
leading the Vikings. Six defensive backs. The run still isn't a bad thing to do here. He threw last time in the situation. Whittington is in there with Van Egan. <laughs> Flag Ever. is down. Bucket dancing around. Fires the ball out of the flat. Complete out there to Whittington. Well, Cliff Branch was offside for sure, but the Vikings also had somebody to jump. They could call both of them. This is like a preseason game in terms of really news. Cliff, it was you, my friend, is one of them. <laughs> well, Cliff knows that he dodged his head approvingly. Yeah. <laughs> Says, but one of their guys was doing something wrong. I think it's going to be both offsides. Offside, offense, encroachment, defense. Yep. We'll replay the down. Third down. We'll work it out till we get it right. Jimmy King being worked over. Looks like the left ankle. And maybe it's the ankle. It was very encouraging, however, to see him walk off the field. Yep. The ball is at the 42-yard line. Third down and five as we replay the down following the double foul. Bradshaw split to the right along with Cliff Branch. Bucket steps back in the pocket. Going for Cliff Branch. And oh, we'll see oh, yeah. the obvious foul. It was Walt Williams running right up the back of Cliff Branch as he tried to come back for the ball. And a flag is also down back at the 30-yard line. Now, this will be interesting. There was obvious pass interference. I don't think Branch could have caught the ball, but Williams did run into him, and you got a penalty, as you said, get back to where the quarterback threw it. Let's see. We have a double foul. Defensive interference, 44. <laughs> Holding offense, number 70. We'll replay the down. Yeah, we're uh, going gonna to do it till we get it right. Yeah, this thing is really disintegrated. Henry Lawrence holding Walt Williams' pass interference. It's third down and five, 335 remaining in the third quarter. If you call penalties breaks, Oakland has uh, gotten the short end of that stick. <laughs> Look at the penalty differential. Yep. Well, that one there was... Holding all the majors against Oakland. That would have been a 60-yard pass interference penalty as opposed to a 10-yard holding penalty. <laughs> third and five again, Giff. Getting very familiar with it. Now he's going to run. Whittington. He'll be short of the first down at the 48 yard line. Tom Flores cannot be happy with the ragged play of his team as well as Minnesota, even though the, the Raiders are leading 23 10. And here's Ray Guy. And Eddie Payton moves deep for the Minnesota Vikings. Reach the point where Peyton is their lone offensive threat. And the Vikings are going to have the ball one more time with the wind at their back. And as strong as this wind is, they better make that good because it's going to be tough coming back, throwing the ball against the wind. They're going to try to block it. They go for the ball. And Ray Guy senses it, hurries the kick, and still gets a booming towering kick that goes all the way to the 10-yard line and that's where the Raiders hustle down and nail Eddie Payton. Ted Watts down there first, the number one draft pick. And the Minnesota Vikings with 238 working with the win here in the third quarter take over deep in their own territory, down by 13. We're back in Bloomington and the Minnesota Vikings down by 13 points will take over at their own 10-yard line. How would you like to be in Bill's spot here? He cannot run the ball. He's on his own 10-yard line. Facing the defense has pressured him all night. Nobody said it'd be easy. Tony Galbraith stays in, number 32, and Ricky Young, number 34. Those are the setbacks. This is Ricky Young. Oh, gosh. Pecking along the line until he finds Big John Matuzak. Gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Well, Kenny King, by the way, we have been told, has a slightly sprained ankle. He might be back. I doubt it, Frank, unless they get into trouble. That's a major gain for the Vikes tonight on the ground. Uh, about two and a half yard gain. Moves them up to 13 and a half for the night. What <laughs> about that old <laughs> adage about setting up your running game to make the passing game go? Second and eight. 
Bills. Oh, that was complete. Here comes Rashad. Ahmad Rashad has kept his string of 62 games intact. And he has also put the Minnesota Vikings from the shadow of their goalpost to midfield. There he goes. The play pass action. The, the Raiders only had three defensive linemen. They got no pass rush out of that. They have time to throw the Rashad. Quite frankly, Howard, I don't know why the Raiders are standing in the three-man line. The Vikings can't run. I they don't can, either. They might as well go to a four-man line. Only the only way defense. they've nullified, they've nullified their own best defensive effort. That's Dan right. Hendricks. I don't understand it. And they're not blitzing off the three-man line then. Well, there's there's some ten at midfield. They blitz this time with Hendricks. The play action again, and a flag is down. The intended receiver was censored. See the difference with Hendricks rushing? Yeah, right pressure. back in there. Holding the Vikings, and they are beginning to make the major mistakes. That, of course, coming your way on Saturday. And Notre Dame going against Michigan. Notre Dame, number one, getting off to a their winning ways already early in the year again 130 Eastern 1230 Central 1030 Pacific college football two of the big names over the year Notre Dame and Michigan and ratings again according to the Associated Press Ron Yeri holding for Minnesota and yet first down and 20 congratulations to Bill Curry of Georgia Tech for his major upset over Alabama last week nobody thought he could do it but old Curry did count and <laughs> Oakland is offside whether or not they were drawn off we'll wait and see I think they were false start on a quarterback what happened Steve Dills is getting into the act Dills he wanted to get out of there in a hurry and Swilly never gave him the ball I think he pulled out too quick down will remain the same it'll be first down and 25 not an enviable position now it's interesting to see if Oakland goes to their four man rush and uh, five defensive backs remaining in the third quarter. They've got it in there. They've got Sir Cedric Hartman in there. And they feel with Willie Jones out of the lineup, Cedric Hartman, the veteran of 12 years, is still their finest pass rusher. He's number 86. Bills. This will be overthrown, almost intercepted by Burgess Owens or Dwayne Osteen. And I'm just looking at a frustrated number 28, Ahmad Rashad, because he had beaten his man, was wide open. Steve Bills did not throw to the open receiver still don't understand why they're dropping Hendricks back every time he rushes he dominates the play forced a penalty a few seconds ago they have so many ways in which they come at you Howard they really do they Hendricks is a danger he's like another defensive back when he drops into the defense but I agree with Howard he's pressured them all night they haven't blocked him yet when he's rushed oh I think we'll see there he is top of your screen now now he drops still again. back second and 25 over the middle and it's complete to Ricky Young who gets maybe five or six yards they needed much more all right America got the major league base third down and 18 final seconds kicking away here in the third quarter There's double coverage on Sammy White, and a flag goes down. We could have pass interference. Yep, that's what it's going to be. Lester Hayes, Burgess Owens were in great position. There was no reason for the interference. Interference, 37 defense. First down. Lester Hayes. this thing is disintegrating we may get back to a football game again out there with the new rules it is some kind of tough to play in the defensive secondary in this league now any bump any touch any glance and the defense has got a penalty the first down is at the 32 yard line of the Oakland Raiders <laughs> Bills looks it over man down front for the Raiders and hanging it up deep intended for Sammy Wyatt who was knocked off as was Ahmad Rashad well that's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Oakland Raiders 23 the Minnesota Vikings 10 
We begin the fourth quarter here in Bloomington, Minnesota. The Minnesota Vikings on the move because of an interference call against Lester Hayes. They have a first down and 10 inside the 33-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. They trail 23 to 10, or rather a second down and 10. No sensor, the tight end is in motion. Bills going to Sammy White. He's there and inside the 10-yard line, stepping out of bounds. Down at the 7-yard line, it'll be first and goal to go. And no flags. All right, here is the end zone. Dills gets a little time. He needs time to throw this corner pattern to White. Matuzak's in his face. He makes a good throw. White beats McKinney. I don't care how good you are man-to-man -man, when, when you give him time. Watch Dills take another lick as Matuzak comes in. That's Smarts. Kids learning how to play, though. 285 pounds. 6'8 is Don Matuzak. Ball just inside the seven yard line. First down, goal to go. And here's where Oakland has this coming. I don't agree with the whole defensive play. Well, here's where you need to be able to run the ball. This quarter. Let's see if they can run it. They might go to the pass right now. I'd hate to think they would try with the run. <laughs> or not. The quick roll. Got a touchdown. Ricky Young. Touchdown. And Minnesota draws close once again. It's a ball game again. Well, you got a flag down. discussion down on the field. They might call this a pick, Howard. No touchdown. Nope. Offensive pass interference. 28. Against Ahmad Rashad. Yeah. And you're right. They don't call it a pick anymore, Fran. But he did step into one of the defenders, prohibiting his line to the receiver. It's like a screen in basketball where you screen a man off, and that's what Ahmad did. Uh, you do it and hope you get away with it. It's better sometimes to ask forgiveness rather than permission. This time they asked forgiveness, and it didn't work. <laughs> Offensive pass interference, number 28, still first down. And the ball moved now back to the 17-yard line. Down in that area, you've got man-on-man -man coverage, and Ahmad tried to screen the linebacker who was coming out to cover Young. He did it very well. <laughs> they watch that now. We used to do a lot of it. Y'all cheated a lot more those in the gift. Oh, yeah, we even got to hit people. <laughs> Down remains the same. First and goal to go at the 17. Hanging it up in the corner, intended there. What a, Rashad. what a matchup. What a matchup. Hayes and Rashad. And they both jumped up and uh, they're talking to each other down there. Ahmad said, that's not bad, Lester. He said, I'll get you next time. Lester said, I don't have stick on my hands I was going to say, Ahmad was checking Lester for stick -em. Yeah. <laughs> Good defensive play by Lester sure. Hayes. That really was. What a remarkable year once again. 13 regular season interceptions, five in the playoffs. Well, again, the uh, most compelling statistic is Minnesota's absence of a ground game. Yards passing, they're now well ahead of Oakland. Total yardage, they're not that far away. Possession time, not that unequal. But no ground game. Nope. Marty McDowell, the Vikings' first-round pick, or rather first choice in the draft, is in there. He wears number 88. Sensor off the fingertips. Again, good coverage. Otis McKinley, McKinney, and Lester Hayes. Here's a little interesting piece of data for you, Howard. Yesterday, of the 12 games or 11 games played, nine teams that won also rushed for more yards than the team that lost. Where are you getting all this information? I scour that paper on Monday morning. <laughs> Bud Grant has the old silver fox. In his 15th year, as I mentioned earlier, 11 Central Division titles out of 14 years. You throw his victories up at Winnipeg in with his wins here at Minnesota, and he's second only to George Hallis overall. Third and goal from the 17. A lot of time for Dills. He's got a man. He's got a receiver. Sammy White. And we will have a fourth and goal to go. And I don't think there's any decision here. He's got to go for the touchdown. They'll mark it inside the four-yard line. Get the play in quickly. I Let just, the team settle down. Frank, I just don't understand 
in professional football why o Oakland is playing this kind of defensive game. Well, they could not get the play. And again, both teams are on the same side of the field. The Vikings are furthest now from the offensive huddle. So timeout is called because this one the Vikings desperately need. A touchdown and they draw within six points of the Oakland Raiders. All the discussion has taken place. Back into the huddle comes young Steve Deals. It is fourth down, goal to go. The ball inside the four-yard line. Bills comes up to the line of scrimmage, looks it over. You know the call coming directly from the bench. Surprise play here. Could be a trap up the middle, Gip. Would that surprise you? They could do it. It would shock me. Well, it's not, it would shock me. Not going to do it. Probably the man should've. was open. It was Joe Sensor underthrown. Otis McKinney on the coverage. But the pass rush was returned. Matt Millen rushed the pass, so the linebacker blitzed, and that we haven't been seeing lately from Oakland. They got the pressure again. All right, here's Dills. He's going to get pressure again. His man is pretty well covered by McKinney. He had a little step, but he'll get somebody right in his face as you see him there and gets kissed. Ooh. And the pressure came right in his line of sight to Sensor. So Oakland will take over at their own four-yard line. And you will see some Van Egan running. Again, Kenny King on the sideline with a sprained ankle. The two tight ends are in. That's for additional blocking. Van Egan. Van Egan moves out over the five to the seven-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. My opinion, the whole Viking drive was made possible, even though it failed, by the absence of the pass rush. As and Oakland changed its whole defensive strategy. And penalties again. Uh, every drive they've had tonight has been the result of some kind of penalty against the uh, against the Oakland Raiders. By the now, way, this town's pretty excited about the young Minnesota Twins. Today, one last seventh in a row. Red Hot Ball Club in the second half. Look how far Walt Williams is off of Cliff Branch. He's about 14 yards off. Been He's got to go all night. Van Egan, left side, finds an opening, gets out over the 10-yard line. And Minnesota is saying they've got the football. The Raiders are saying they do not. You know, I know that when you're in this situation with that kind of lead, ball control looks good. When you got a cornerback playing 14 yards off your end, there's no safer play in the world than just to throw a hitch out there. Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. Because fumbles are part of the game down there. Third down, call it three, as they mark the ball at the 11-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. Shabbily played game. Both sides. Yet there is much on the line. Both these teams lost their opener. San Diego and Oakland's division, along with Kansas City, have won their first two. Block it. Man is open. Cliff Branch. And almost picked off. Good defensive play by Willie Teal. But not a good throw by Jim. He laid the ball up too high. Branch had his man beaten easily. And if he'd have put the ball on a line like he can do, he would have had the, a big play. Watch Branch. You'll see him beat his man to the post. There's no free safety out there. He's got nothing but the middle of the field. And he straightens him up with a high pass. And Teal, it gave Teal a chance to make a play. Should have been a long, long gainer for the Raiders. Now, here's where Ray Guy comes in handy, Jeff, with the win that is back. I'm just amused where Eddie Payton is lined up. He's inside his own 35-yard line. Ray <laughs> Guy is halfway into his end zone. What respect. They got the return on this time. Ray Guy kicking with the win. Oh, well, they don't either. <laughs> and he had to hurry once again. And now Eddie Payton calls for the fair catch at midfield. Pulls it off. And Minnesota will be in good field position once again on a 40-yard net by Ray Guy. And we'll be back in Bloomington, Minnesota again with fine field position. Steve Dills has thrown the ball 40 times. He threw it 62 times last week against Tampa Bay. And 13 times rushing. But would you try to rush the ball any more than that when you had 13 rushes for 14 yards, Howard? No, but five. history proves you can't win with that kind of unbalanced attack. Five other Ryan. times he was sacked trying to throw. First and 10, Minnesota. Rod Martin. And 
Dave Browning finally pulls down Steve Dills. Six times tonight, the sack. This time, there's a loss of 12. Well, there it is. The minute they go back to the rush, instead of giving yardage and short stuff and giving Dills time, well, it's interesting. they kill him. Well, it's interesting that that play pass action from Minnesota has been giving him protection tonight. I don't know why, but there's no threat of the run. That time, Oakland ignored the threat of the run and rushed the passer. And Steve Dills holding his left arm gives way to Ricky Wade Wilson from East Texas State. Now I'll tell you guys, this is a tough situation for this kid. He really hasn't played hardly at all in training camp. No experience whatsoever. Eighth round draft pick. Flips it out quickly. This is Tony Galbraith. He comes back in. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that's all. Guys, I gotta leave. I see Bud motioning to me. I'll say I'm going down to the field. <laughs> But here I am, up here. The boat, you motion to me? I'll be down in a minute. Look up here. So it's third down and 20, and there is another injured player down on the field, another Viking. Four-year letterman at East Texas State was Wade Wilson. Wade is a pocket passer, completed 338 out of 660 attempts for over 4,000 yards and 32 touchdowns, but he's playing in a different league at the moment. So Wade Wilson has replaced Steve Dills with an injured Tommy Kramer, still unable to perform. Should be interesting. We'll be back with the action in a moment. Green Raw rookie is in the lineup at quarterback Wade Wilson, an eighth-round draft pick from East Texas State. Third down and 20. <laughs> That's not a good situation to come in on. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Sammy White, that's the first down, I do believe. Again, it will depend upon where they mark it. Very fine pass. It was a wonderful pass. How many? Here's the low reverse angle. There's these, the, the great picture. You see Sammy White making his break. You see Wilson throwing. Well, a, a linebacker had to fall down, but Sammy's in position. Wilson delivered the ball. And we, and, we, and we got a first down. Strange a, things happened. It was a, the slip that enabled the completion. Had a Joe Cap <laughs> spiral on it. First and ten. Such happenings are legends made. Wade Wilson. Look at this. Complete to Tony Galbraith. Nine-yard pickup. This is really something. We got a story in the making, fellas. Saw left shoulder for Dills and Wade Wilson. Frankly, as Red said to Scarlett, you know. <laughs> I know what you're going to see a lot of by Oakland. When you get a young quarterback in, you try to show them a lot of movement along the line of scrimmage. You show them a lot of blitzes. Try and upset. Look at Bud laughing. He can't believe it either. <laughs> Bud can't believe it either. It's down 13 points. 10 minutes, 20 seconds left to go. And he's got an unknown quantity of quarterback that is two for two. Ricky Young, right side, gets the first down with the strong running game of the Vikings. <laughs> Bud Graff actually did show the first smile I think we've ever had on our ABC cameras. Calling the plays into Wade Wilson <laughs> with the wigwag. Bud had no... Vikings first rushing first down of the night. He had no idea that he'd have to have to play Wade Wilson, the quarterback, I can assure you. And the kid is doing okay. Hasn't even played in preseason. No. Had he played in practice. Here comes the safety blitz, Otis McKinney. And quickly, Wilson recovers, gets on the ball, but there is a loss. Back to the 39-yard line. Now, McKinney showed you something tonight, didn't he? Watch this. Now, here's, here's what you should do. The guy, he, there's no way he knows there's going to be a corner blitz or a safety blitz. McKinney comes from the blind side. A veteran quarterback has to watch him line up, and he can, he can kind of sense they're going to come like that and has to get rid of the ball. He, this kid has no idea. He's never seen it before. Ne never has. He, he still doesn't know who hit him. Second down and 20. Oakland's had seven sacks, Minnesota three, but the kid kept his presence, recovered the football. Oh, he did. All kinds of blitzes. This one batted away by John Matuzak. 6'8". <laughs> the man can really stretch out. <laughs> As 
single is. twos. First player picked in the draft in 73. He's had quite a journey through the NFL. But he found a home, didn't he? Signed up the WFL. Court threw that out. Traded by Houston to Kansas City. Then sent to Washington. They let him go. He played superb football here at Oakland. Yeah, you like that move. I like it. Uno the mini. That's not bad. All right, this is kind of getting exciting with old Wade. Let's see what he's going to do. The rookie, second round draft pick, Marty McDowell is in there. They're not blitzing. They're giving him. There's it is. The blitz was his arm in motion. This could be six points. I think. Yeah. It's going to be Cedric Hartman. And it was Howard Long. We talked about him earlier that really popped Wade Wilson, caught the ball up. Cedric Hardman picked it up. The arm was not in motion. It was a fumble. And Cedric Hardman has scored for Oakland. Howard Long, last man at Villanova. Villanova's last football team. And the legend will have to wait. Yep, I'm afraid it will. But he, the kid did well. Uh, I'd like to see that replay again. It looked like to me he had another slippy like, uh, like Stills did a while ago. Let's watch it. There he goes back. He must have that right arm in motion. All right, let's see if he does. He had it back. He had it back, and I don't know. No, it wasn't going forward till he had lost the ball. The entire Viking offensive unit, they wouldn't have caught Hardman in any event. But they that's the kind of relaxed. That's the furthest Hardman's run in 10 years, Frank. Oh, he had some great years with the 49ers before joining Oakland a year ago. Here's Chris Barr. They're the uprights. And Oakland is beginning to put the Vikings out of their misery. And they do have some with quarterback Tommy Kramer unable to play. Now Steve Dills, the backup to an injured Tommy Kramer, also out of the lineup with the rookie Wade Wilson in. Not happy times for Bud Grant. With his one and two quarterback both out of action. An offense without any resemblance of a running game whatsoever. But his owner, Max Winter, still has a sense of humor. He just in the next booth, and there's a glass pane separating us, took out his billfold, took out all the money from that fold, held it up as an enticement to Sir Francis, come back. <laughs> and I said more. <laughs> he sent somebody out. Short kick, looking to pick it off, and it's covered by Minnesota at the 30-yard line. It was Marty McDowell, the rookie from Mississippi State. Now, Giff, you posed an interesting question. What happens if Wade Wilson goes down? And the way they're the way they're hitting him, they'll it's find tough. they'll find Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee He's got more lives than the cat. He keeps coming back and back and back. There he is, 6'3", 212 pounds. I see Max. Max, That's hold up Max that Winter. hold up that money again, Max. Yep. Principal owner of the Vikings. That's some guy. <laughs> 838 remaining in the game. Tony Galbraith, a single setback. Sammy White. Marty McDowell, the rookie from Mississippi State with the blazing speed is in there now. This is Sammy White. Ball thrown low, and he settles at the 32-yard line for a gain of a couple. And he got to meet Ted Hendricks, too. I imagine he always wanted to get Ted's autograph, and he had a chance right there. You think back, how old would he have been? Ted's been around 14 years. Got Wade Wilson, 22 years old. Well, I guess he'd have been eight. Out there. He'd have been eight. He probably would like his autograph. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Second down and eight. I'm on the shot. Spits out to the right. Marty McDowell to the left. Wilson this time again he was confronted this time by big Joe Campbell 6'6 250 pounds he tried to throw between his arms and another factor involved here Frank because clearly Oakland has this game won. remember this Thursday night the Eagles against the Bills both unbeaten two magnificently constructed football teams but the Bills, with that great defense, suddenly have scored 66 points in two games, so now they've apparently got the offense to go with. I'll get back to the other point after this play. <laughs> okay. Third down and seven. Well, 
Wilson. And that oh! has been caught and almost was taken on the deflection out of the hands of Rashad by Sammy White. Fourth down, and out comes the punting unit. Funny what was interesting about this aspect of it, Howard. <laughs> point I was going to make is National Football Conference has grown weary of the domination by the AFC and interconference play in recent years. But after Oakland wins this game, quickly the AFC will be ahead 5-1. to one. The only NFC victory, the Eagles over the Pats. There's Ira Matthews. You really keep track of that, don't you? I think it's interesting. Greg Coleman. Money. Matthews. Yeah. He's a purple shirt right in his face and steps out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Keith Nord hustling down as we look at John Matuzak. We look at the scoreboard. <laughs> Six wild. Okay, 7:30 remaining in the game. <laughs> Good practice. Well, in case you missed it, this was the high point of the final quarter. Our most exciting moment. <laughs> those are not, those are not Eddie Davis' eyes. <laughs> look how the much bigger. And <laughs> he makes Browning look like a little boy, and Browning is, what, 245, 255, 245, and he looks like Matuzak's little kid. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? <laughs> All right, first and ten for the Oakland Raiders. The ball inside their own 31-yard line. The game well in hand. Nothing they can be terribly proud about. But when you look back at the end of the season, it won't really matter. No one will necessarily remember how it was played. Barnwell now split to the left. He has the blazing speed. I think the Raiders would like to see what he can do. Whittington over the left side. Not an easy night for this man, Ahmad Rashad. It's tough for quality players like Ahmad to be in a game when they get beaten like this. They're having to go with their third team quarterback. Uh, he's been used to playing on championship teams here. It's not he easy to be 0-2. He will never give less than 100%, however. He's that kind of a player. There was a gain of four at second down and six. Whittington over the left side. Plunkett. The flag is down. This is Malcolm Barnwell, and the Raiders really high on this youngster. Came up a year ago and missed the season with an injury. Great speed. Virginia Union, a bond burner. Hmm. Offside Oakland. Even Jim is getting tired of all these penalties. A pair of young quarterbacks. Offside, still second down. And the man on the spot at the moment with Bills injured is, of course, the rookie Wade Wilson from East Texas State. Derek Ramsey is a tight end now for Oakland. It'll be second down and 11. Ten penalties against the Raiders, 119 yards. Whittington, again, over Archdale, Gene Upshaw. All right, here we go, guys. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is forbidden. I don't know. Dandy does that. It. Dandy does that pretty good. You know, he sings that once in a while. You're going to have to loosen up your singing voice. Francis. Well, I, I checked your act out singing. Well, we'll give him a test. Dandy, of course, will be in Buffalo with us, Grant. He gets to go to all the biggies. Oh, I, you, I've got your old teammate out, teammates out here tonight. Third down and seven. Plunkett. Balls on the ball. I might also wonder, as we see another flag down in the field, would it be, this be a pretty good time to see Mark Wilson, the potentially brilliant quarterback for the Oakland Raiders, who maybe could well use a little playing time. That's a very good point. You wonder why he hasn't been put in there. The scuttlebutt all around the league is that this kid may become the next truly great quarterback. Mark Wilson out of Brigham. An interior lineman on the right side was offside defense, still third down. There he is right there. What a remarkable career he had at Brigham Young. He's big, 6'6", 205. Has already shown that he can move the football, even though he only threw it five times last year. He was very well in the preseason this year. We've got a third and three now for the Raiders. Luck 
second. He's being pursued by McLair and finally dumps it off in the general direction of Cliff Branch, and it brings up fourth down. Giff and Howard, let me ask you a question. Uh, there's no question that Al Davis thinks that Mark Wilson will be their quarterback someday. How long do you think he will make him wait? Two more years. What do you think, Giff? Well, I just thought he could, I don't believe to replace Plunkett at all after what no. he did last year, but no, I think no. it's the time when you could put him in there. Plunkett, let's face it, he took them to the Super Bowl. He earns the right to be in there, but up 30 to 10, five minutes left in the game. Let's face it, he's not going to hurt them. Jim Plunkett's the kind of man that would understand it. Probably like the rest. Ray got a punt, Eddie Payton, way back. Flags are down once again. And the Vikings are all sides, and that'll give Oakland a first down. Their catch called for and made, and unless they were drawn off, that will be exactly the situation. We'd like to remind you about Nightline coming your way tonight on ABC. And it'll explore the controversial visit of the South African rugby team to the United States. A controversy that some say could even cost the U.S. the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. That's on Nightline tonight. They must have drawn him offside because the Viking did jump, but the guard must have moved in front of him, or the center moved the ball, one of the two. I'm not sure it makes a lot of difference at this point of the game. No, it doesn't. This has not been a tidy victory for a Super Bowl champion. Team. motion, right guard offense, still fourth down. But they will take it because they'll have the first victory under their belts, and they didn't play that great early last year either. They really came together in the 45-34 victory over Pittsburgh. Well, you know, all your victories are not tidy, Howard. You take them anyway you can get them, and you have them all types during the season. As, uh, they never remember at the end of the year. No, nope. they... Next Sunday, Oakland will open up at home against Seattle. Great guy, really bangs this one up high. We'll yeah. have ice on it, and a flag is down. I think we might have we roughing. We might have roughing against Ray Guy. Yes, we will. Let's see if he acted his way to that penalty, or he really got hit. I mentioned that Oakland will be home to Seattle. We'll look again. Right, here we go. Thank you, Mr. Forty. Let's watch this act. Or was it the real thing? There it goes. Sometimes it looks like a kind of a candy way to bring that one even. That's another one. I was only trying to explain. A punter is so vulnerable when he's up completely off the ground, and that's why you really cannot touch him. There he is. That's my man, Mark Wilson. Everybody loves the young quarterbacks who have never played a whole lot. Remember that. <laughs> I don't think they'll let him throw the ball unless he gets into a necessary position. And quickly, defensively, fine play by James White, the nose guard. Duck quiet, as they call him up here, a loss of a couple. Detroit will come here next week for the Minnesota Vikings in Detroit. They're a vastly improved team. Playing pretty good football. They played San Diego as close as you want to get yesterday in well, losing. That's they have, right. They held the Chargers to under 60 yards rushing yesterday with their newfound running attack of Brooks and Muncie. Played very well. Second down and 12. Could be that Mark Wilson will put it in the air. Could be, but isn't. Whittington over the right side. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 10. Dennis Johnson is in there defensively. Now at linebacker. Yeah, here's, here's a little trivia for it. First touchdown pass ever threw in the stadium was caught by the now offensive coach of the Detroit Lions. Former teammate of yours with the New York football Giants. That's not trivia. That's trouble. Bob Schnelker. Oh, is Bob in right. Detroit? I can keep track of him. I, yep. He's a great pal, but he, he has been traveling around the league, hasn't he? Number 85, he wore out of Bowling Green. That's right. They mark it up around the 38-yard line, so it's third down and nine. Here's Wilson's first pass. Going for the speedster. Barnwell. Touchdown. Oh, -ho! that's the man that they're so high on. Malcolm Barnwell out of Virginia Union. Basically a rookie 61-yard touchdown from Mark Wilson, beating Walt Williams. Didn't take him long, did it? Nice throw. I saw him one time play a game, a bowl game in San Diego. The first three times he threw the pass for Brigham Young were touchdowns like this. 
Just a wrist. Pretty spiral also, Francis. What a throw. Well, that was a nice throw. It, uh, the guy was had Walt Williams one-on-one, -on -one, no free safety. I mean, it was a good play, but it, uh, it's the first professional touchdown pass and the first professional touchdown by Barnwell. Chris Barr, the attack on the insult. That's usually where Matt Blair comes over the top. And I'm sure it was. Yes, it was. All 59. Although it was a low kick. Sets 11 NCAA records that Brigham Young did this young man over three years. 29 touchdown passes as a senior. Over 3,500 yards in his senior year. He had seven straight games of 300 plus yards. I'd say he has a future. He might have a future. Obviously, he's a good prospect, but the truth will never be known until he has to take a team from day one to the end of the 16-game season and see how he does over the home. There well, are starters and there are test. relievers. That's right? the true test. I've seen a lot of guys come in relief and be absolutely unbelievable when they had to carry the load they weren't. I've got a question, Fran. Your first game up here, you were not the starting quarterback. Who did start up there? George started. George Shaw George started Shaw. for the first five minutes, and then and then I got to play from that point on. And that began first game. the enmity with Van Brock. <laughs> That's right. And <laughs> uh, the first game played here, you beat the Chicago Bears. Right? That's right. We did. 38-13. That is true. That is true. There's Eddie Payton. Chris Barr. Bills are on the ground trying to avoid Eddie Payton. And Eddie Payton avoids the ball. Covers it in the end zone. Touchback. That's right. Oh, and Barnwell again in on the play, and Eddie Payton did not like Barnwell putting his hands on him in the end zone. Well, if you want to see a fight, gentlemen, it'll take place in Las Vegas Wednesday night. Who do you like in the fight, Howard? Hearns, Leonard. It pays your money, it takes your choice. I can't figure it out. Hearns, of course, the big knockout artist. Leonard. Oh, Leonard's a much better he's puncher had. than he's given credit for being, believe me. I don't know. I think the big question is how does how does Leonard's mental, emotional, and physical being compare with what it was before Duran second time around? Well, one thing is bank accounts, all right. That's the point. Did he become a banker instead of a fighter? First and ten, 20-yard line for the Minnesota Vikings. They will have lost their first two games of the season for the first time ever here in Minnesota as we watch rookie Jarvis Redwine from Nebraska. A second round draft pick. Pick up quick, quick seven yards. Those are the results of turnovers as they usually are. Minnesota traded their first round draft pick this past season to Baltimore. And picked up Baltimore, picked up two second round picks. So Baltimore had an extra one. And red wide. The man who just carried the ball was one of those second round draft picks. Marty McDowell, the rookie from Mississippi State, was the other. Red wine has been an open disappointment, Frank, to the Vikings, and it's only fair to say so in terms of the Vikings management and coaching staff. They've discovered that Jarvis will not run inside, but will invariably run outside. Red wine, of course, from Nebraska. We saw another Nebraska running back, a second round draft pick of Miami, Andre Franklin, who performed well this past Thursday night. Says Red Wine. Gets the first down out of over the 35. 5'10, 198 pounder. As a junior, 1,100 yards rushing. As a senior, 1,100 yards rushing. Really, out of the draft, the, they might have help in the future out of that draft, but they got really no starter help out of the draft this year. Inside 230. But then Bud Grant doesn't play many rookies. He hasn't had many rookie starters in his coaching career. Redwine is the top rusher now for the Vikings for the night with 15 yards. This is Sam Harrell, right side, out to the 42-yard line. Sam Harrell, basically a rookie himself, missed his first season of a year ago with him being on the injured reserve, and we're heading for the two-minute warning. 
Kevin Grant cannot be happy with what has occurred here tonight. Minnesota up to the line of scrimmage. They're looking at youngsters now. Davis Redwine, 22, one set back. The rookie we've talked about from Nebraska, Sam Harrell, basically a rookie from East Carolina. And this is Darvis Redwine, right side. Now they are running. Of course, Oakland relaxed. First down for Minnesota. Stadium almost empty here as the final season of Metropolitan Stadium gets underway tonight, and a disappointing one, surely, for the good fans up here. And over the years, Fran, they have been good fans, great supporters. They really have. They've come out here to sell the stadium out in 10 below zero weather. It makes no difference to the weather here. They've been here to support this team. Okay, Wade Wilson, surrounded with a pair of rookies, did not like what was happening. He uses a timeout. The Vikings have one. They have a little more than 120 remaining. And I want to remind you again, if you haven't dozed off, that we are going to see quite a ball game on Thursday night at a special time again at 8.30. The Buffalo Bills with a tremendous defensive unit. And, of course, the steady, reliable Joe Ferguson, who finally has collected himself a supporting cast. First and ten. Wade Wilson. Complete. This is Bob Brewer, who has come in for Sensor at tight end. You know, Jeff, the Vikings may be 0-2 now, but anybody in the Central Division knows as long as Bud Grant is here coaching, they're never out of this division race. That may be, but there are days of wine and glory, and success in sport is but transitory. And we'll watch this play. On second down and two, Red Wine gets the first down. The basic fact is that realistically, we are seeing a transition in power in the National Football League. Teams like Atlanta and Buffalo becoming first line. Consistency of excellence being maintained by Dallas and by Oakland. But Minnesota's in trouble. The draft choices are in here. Pittsburgh has only three rookies on their whole team, part of their problem. So Chuck must begin to rebuild. Noel, of course, I mean. And the Rams' problems, nobody can figure out. <laughs> on first and ten, Wade Wilson. Going deep. And, of course, coverage downfield provided by Dwayne Osteen, who is just kind of playing back there. Center field. Clock stop with five seconds on it. And, and this man is hard to say. They have not performed all that well, Howard, tonight, the Oakland Raiders. No, but this is the way they started last year, really, to come on. Somehow they make the plays they have to make. They're a consistently excellent professional football team. Now, Detroit is coming on. That much is clear. And surprising a lot of people, the early play of San Francisco. And There's in, a reformation going on, Frank. And in Oakland's division, San Diego and Kansas City. And don't forget the Packers. Wilson complete over the middle on second down and 10. That'll be the final play of the game. But Grant, as I said before, cannot be all that happy with what he's watched tonight. Watch 